Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast, is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. Welcome back to Two Nations Under Ted, kids. You made it. We made it. We have arrived. This is episode 12 of season two. You made it. You've come along on the journey with us, hopefully since day one. We're one step closer to finishing the entire freaking series. How's about that? End of season two, here today. When I tell you we're anxious to talk about it, believe me, we're anxious to talk about it. I had to tell these guys, stop talking before we hit record. Tom (laughs) Clark here with you as always, along with Jay Left and Joe Higgins. We're here today to bring you the good, bad, and very ugly of season two, episode 12. Joe, you're chomping at the bit. Oh. First thoughts, first thoughts going into this episode. It's, you know, it's going to be based on the season one, the ending of that, you know, a lot of stuff is going to be revealed because that's how this works, isn't it? But, mm-hmm. and with the things ramping up as they were with Nate, uh, with Sam, Obisanya as well, late in the game, but yeah. And, and Ted's um, ongoing sort of mental health problems as well a lot of stuff in this episode is a very poignant but also infuriating and i'd i'd forgotten from watching it the first time one particular scene that boils my piss like i i i get it it's for the reason of that and it's but i just you want you know you want to reach in and just shake somebody like mm. it was just just you you've completely grasped the wrong end of the stick but you're too far down to to be redeemed now it, it oh it, it's not the same sadness as the funeral episode this is like a a, a visceral anger visceral anger and it's not even real no that's well, I mean, Jay, to Joe's point, we've been suckered in since the beginning because we love this stuff and we go on the roller coaster ride with characters who don't exist. But in some weird way, I think we've all three on this journey have connected our own lives to this show and, and at various points and maybe people we know or have known in our lives now or before or maybe to ourselves. What's your emotional reaction after having just watched episode 12? Now we're going to talk about it here today. Um, fuck Nate Shelley. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's it, kids. Thanks for watching. That's good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I said just before we started recording, like Nick Mohammed, like acts his ass off in this, like this episode in particular. Yeah, and he, he literally like, there's so many little things he does where it, it's like he's, it's like he's having like an argument with himself, but just doing it by like expressions. Um. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He's he's very, very good. And the it literally like there's times where you think, oh, maybe he's gonna redeem himself until like he fully like commits to like, no, this is the path I'm going down. There is that that bit, isn't there, where he goes, I have a confession to make. Yeah. And you go, Oh, he's gonna do the honorable thing. That's that's the thing I think that pushed him over the edge. Yeah, that's that's the switch. Yeah, that is the straw that breaks the the Nate Shelley's back. Yeah, yeah. For for many different weird reasons, I think you guys are right about that one line and that other character's reaction. Yeah, it's it's. I get it, but also when we get to that scene in particular, my my aggrievement is that even a word with it is is just so so like you you don't understand. He doesn't yeah, understand anything. It, it's a lot. It's a lot to. Uh, it's a lot to absorb. It's a lot to go through again. If you, you know, when you connect with a show and it it means a lot to you, and and uh, you know, you you're aware it's entertainment. You aware you can just turn it off. But like when things stay with you after the fact, it's one of the reasons I can't watch like like you know really well done zombie flicks or like horribly gruesome slasher movies. Cause stuff tends to stay with me for a long period of time. And like, I just have an issue with images dancing in my head. And I just, sometimes I don't want those images to be there. So like with a show like I this, can't watch Poltergeist. Yeah. That clown. Yeah, dude. My mom had the exact same clown in her house. Oh, what? Um, yeah. I, I thought you were going to say the exact same Poltergeist then. <laughs> it was, yes. 
Derek, he was gold. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> he was a nice guy. Uh, yeah, lovely. Yeah, I just, I can't. I'm with you guys. I, I can't. You know, in this show, I want this show in my head, and it's in my head quite a bit, to be honest, but like the bad bits and stuff we'll get to today. But it's it's part of the ride, kids. It's part of the storytelling of this show that we all love so much. Let's get into it, my friends. Episode 12 is entitled Inverting the Pyramid of Success. If you're watching the video, you can tell once again, we refuse to cover up our friend Joe. So we've just got pyramid in quotation marks. That's a long freaking <laughs> title. So episode 12, yes, Inverting the Pyramid of Success. Original air date, October 1st, 2021. This episode directed by Declan Lowney on a story by the one and only Jason Sudeikis and Joe Kelly. 12 episodes in season two. Yes, children, again, you have arrived. When last we left the Ted Lasso gang, we saw Ted struggling with Dr. Sharon's departure from the team as a billionaire would-be football club owner came to Richmond in an effort to woo Sam to play for his team back in his home country of Nigeria. Keely and Roy had an awkward talk after Nate kissed her while clothes shopping, and the news of Ted's panic attack during the FA Cup final Wembley Stadium was leaked to the press by none other than Nate himself. The Dark Nate storyline is upon us in a big, bad way. Look, guys, before we go cranking here, we are through the looking glass with this character. The turn that we've teased, we've talked about it for two full seasons now, has now finally happened. It took a long road to get here, but now we're here. Jay, let me start with you. If, if you go down the rabbit hole, we've, we've only briefly mentioned it. If you go down a rabbit hole of Ted Lasso sites and chats and social media, you'll find a whole lot of people who don't buy any of this. I don't know that I, we need to get into that bit, but... Seeing the turn happen, did everything connect okay for you? Were you good with it? Like, did it? Did you have any out of body moments where you're like, "Ah, oh, this is too much"? Did it work for you? I, I think so. I think it's um, you, you can see it with a lot of people where they get like praised to a point where they put themselves on this pedestal and then they start like kind of buying into the, their own hype. And this is what's happened with Nate. I mean, it, it it's. It's weird they did it with such a kind of like innocent character from season one to then mm. flip the switch on him on season two because it is we we don't really see any kind of like negative like aspects of Nate's character until the very first episode of this season. Mm. Like there wasn't any it it's one of the very few things he didn't really foreshadow into in like into from the previous season. Uh but I think that's by design because then it does take take you by complete surprise and you see, it, like the the way it unfolds as well. I think it unfolds at a very good pace. Where, like, obviously, you see little glimmers and people kind of pick up on it and like, oh, okay, that was a bit weird. And then by like this episode, he's he's full bastard. He's just like, but he, <laughs> but even then, he's he's not because you, there's a few moments where you you see him kind of second guessing himself and thinking, am I doing the right thing here? And then it, it's only when it gets to a certain point where like. He goes off the handle, but it, it, I think it, I think it was done really well because yeah, I, I think I, I fucking hate Nate Shelley in the series. Oh, mm -hmm. mate, that ending! I was like, I know I've got a new telly, but I will kick it through. Uh, <laughs> it is that thing that like the first season, his arc is basically his redemption from like bullied victim to being mm. accepted, and then this is him, his acceptance, and people not worshiping at his feet, like. I think that's 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 why we don't get it so much in the first season. Um, but yeah, it's totally believable. Like the reasons he gives, he believes he's right. He's wrong. Like, but and um, I believe it's Higgins that says when Keeley's talking to him, a good mentor um, wants you to go off on your own. A great mentor knows you will like mm. and that's what ted's done like he's given him enough tools for him to better himself and better a lot of made up words today um but and and nate doesn't see because nate wants constant praise possibly because of his father like mm. having mm. ted as a surrogate father figure and then for ted to go well no you you can go out on your own now you're 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 a real boy mm. and he, he yeah. he's lost that it's interesting isn't it the parallels when you think of it with like Ted and Nate and Keely and Rebecca, like the 
there's there's a, the same sort of like mentor mentee relationship, but oh. I think with with like Rebecca, there's a little bit more warmth to it because there's an actual friendship. Whereas Ted thinks oh. of Nate as a friend, but Nate again like kind of well, he, he says doesn't he like Ted forgot about him because yeah. Roy come in and. But yeah, he, uh, he didn't. But also, like Keely's much more socially well adjusted than Nate was. Mm. Is, oh yeah, of even, course. Like, like she's a strong, independent female, and mm. Nate is like was like a, a a boot bitch, wasn't he? Like you know what I mean? It's <laughs> he's, well, he's yeah. never grown up from that. I was gonna give my opinion, which differs drastically in some ways to both of your guys. Not doing it now because you guys. Brought that home. That was well done. I'll get to mine later, okay? Because okay. I don't want to hang any kind of cloud over that. that you guys, <laughs> that was that was really good. Well, here we go, kids. We open with Jeff Stelling, Chris Kamara, and George Cartrick. Remember a good old Coach Cartrick? They're George Cartrick, right? Yeah, <laughs> hard to say it without including that word in front. They're talking about a coaching change at West Ham. They briefly talk and they move on. They don't tell you what they're talking about. They don't elaborate. They move on to Ted's panic attack. So that West Ham line will come back to us later. George says, uh, and George is going off because that's what George does. Would Bill Shankly have a panic attack, eh? Uh. Would Brian Brian Clow, would Alex Ferguson have a panic attack? Jay, I'm assuming, because I think I've heard you mention these guys before. These are all real people, yeah? Yeah, they're, they're, those three in particular are kind of like regarded as like three of the best football managers of all time. Interesting. Um, Brian Clough um, was at my I United, I believe. Dare to say, like old school managers as well. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Shankly was the Liverpool manager in like the I think the sixties and seventies. Uh, he wow. Won all, pretty much everything there was to win with them, he won. Um, there was uh, Brian Clough, as I say, I, I'm not a hundred percent where he was. I think it was Man- Manchester United, and he's he's just like really old school manager. And then Alex Ferguson is. Arguably the greatest manager of all time. He won again. He was at Man- Manchester United for like thirty years. He won everything there was to win multiple times. Um, wow. And yeah, like the the fact that 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 club haven't been the same since he left uh, mm. kind of shows like the impact that a man like Alex Ferguson had on the on them. Um, but yeah, they they were basically kind of like sort of like stiff upper lip. Um, like a bulldog chewing on a wasp, uh, very mm. like, very sort of like straight to the point, no fucking round. Um, uh, Mike Bassett, England manager, is supposedly based on Brian Clough. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I said they must be famous people because I've heard of them, and I'm not a football yeah. person. Like, <laughs> yeah, a- a- Alex Ferguson's probably the most famous out of the lot. Um, but obviously, like as I say, like they've they've kind of like widely regarded as the best managers of their generation like and they're from di- they're from different generations as i say like alex ferguson mm-hmm. only retired like about 10 years ago uh brian clough was like sort of like the 80s 90s and then shankly was the yeah. 60s 70s so that de- well, different different years of manager that's interesting i, I i'm sh- i was certain that was the case i just didn't realize how well how well they were regarded but it's interesting because car trick is going off Again, as he always does. Chris, who's always more level-headed. Chris is like, be fair. He's trying to talk him down. George says, uh, he says look, if your ship's being attacked, I don't see if you can make sense of this. Like, if it's your the ship's most being, bewildering analogy. It's, it's the dumbest thing. Like, I know what... It took me a minute, but he's like, if you run to the bridge, you want to find a captain whose brain works, not some big girl's blouse. And I'm like, oh. okay, well, we what? Well, we already you know. know. That George A is a terrible manager, uh-huh. right? because like Roy said, we only ever bring you in like he's what did you call it? like a caretaker manager until they get someone proper in. Yeah, like, yeah. He's he's just yeah. This I honestly thought when watching this, I was like, is this one of like Ted's weird dream sequence things? Like, no, it's not because he turns the well, TV off and it's it's actually on television. We've allowed someone to go off about someone having a panic attack. I was and- like. Well, just what just what you were going to say, I'll finish it in my head. I'm like, we're going to make fun of a panic attack in 2023, 2020. Now, Ted, of all people, had to be the one to effing say this later, which I'm like, 
I can't believe it took the entire episode for someone to say it out loud, but we'll get there. But you're, I was with you, Joe, on that because it didn't make any sense to me. Like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, sure, people, oh, whoa, whoa. But now we're so sensitive to, you know, people have issues, they're dealing with things, you shouldn't judge people, you know. But, but that's, yeah. that's like a typical reaction of a guy from like his generation, isn't it, towards yeah. that? That's it. Yeah. Like, like even Chris it. Kamara is sort of that era, but even mm. he's like, you don't know what people are going through. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He, he's. I think like George is basically trying to angle for that con- controversy pundit thing, where yeah. they'll say that the sky's mm. green just for the sake of having an argument. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, look at the look at the way the British media do hand handle like a lot of stuff like that. Anyway, they are very. Yeah insensitive to it they are very it, yeah. it is still very much stigmatized within media like it's mm. it shouldn't until be. the person actually dies and then it's oh woe is them yeah. and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It, it absolutely shouldn't be a stigma but it is um because it's at the it end of the day papers, doesn't it? yeah, yeah sells newspapers gets it's people cool. talking i like that jeff just stares in the camera and says i miss roy that was it that was really good <laughs> Well, he referred uh, to him as, 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 as his, uh, a previous foul-mouthed associate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the man they're all talking about, the star of the show, Ted Lasso, of course, he's in his flat, he's going to eat some cereal, and he gets a text from Rebecca <laughs> that says, fuck the haters, which is a callback to the Two Aces episode from season one yep. with the yep. barrel that we have referenced numerous times. I mean, that is, seems to be like the linchpin of the entire Ted Lasso canon is that episode. It is. Everything stems well, from that. It's the turning point, isn't it, where like everyone yeah. kind of gets on board with Ted, like the team, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> even to a degree, my, Rebecca. My one grievance with this is, is there's no way that shredded wheat came out of that box like that. Right? <laughs> just, just wouldn't come out. It's be a load of, There'd be a load of stuff, broken bits behind it as well. Sure, yeah. It's very comical. It's like it was the last one he had or whatever, but yeah, it's comical. So uh, he gets an audio message from Sharon that says, uh, the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. He wants to know, you know, if, if you want to talk about it, let me know. Then he gets a text from Michelle, who, by the way, is in his phone as Michelle Lasso. Yep. And she tells him that she saw the news and hopes he's okay. Then he plays a game of knock, knock and text. And then it's <sighs> Europe, Europe who, Europe late. She says, you're obviously fine. And he asks if it's an early morning or a, a late night. You see the dreaded three dots, and then they the disappear. Dots, which is referenced back to the uh, the banter. That, yes. Well, you don't want the three dots. Yeah. No, it's it's yeah. it's a death nail. She doesn't answer, and he says, sorry, none of my business. Thanks for reaching out. And she hearts that, because well, that that's is, where we are. That's, that's literally okay, isn't it? That's uh-huh. the conversation's done. We're done. That's it. That's like when you send a text and put a period at the end. That person's oh, you, not you happy just, with you. You just respond, ha. Is yeah, what just I, ha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. there's very a subtle, very subtle nuance to this texting thing, kids, in case you didn't know. So Ted goes out of his flat, and he immediately has two paparazzi taking his pics. Ted's very polite, as he always is. They're laughing at him. And then uh, as he's going down the, the I'll, I'll say, street, right, He's there's... Of course, it's a show. There's numerous people holding papers. He says hello to someone named Susan, who we've never met. She works in a bakery, it looks like. I guess, yeah. But I like the fact that Ted lives in some sort of Beauty and the Beast bell town, <sighs> like where he knows everyone. There goes the baker. Yeah, um, we've established that for sure. Yeah. The the, I think the, one of the paparazzis is the guy that Roy threatened. And is it his memory card as well? I'm not 100 percent sure, but I thought it was, and I didn't bother to check it up. But I didn't I, think I, about that. It would be a fun little callback if it was, because again, scum. Uh, you would think that Roy would have scared the crap yeah. out of that guy, but Ooh. he's got a lot of expensive camera equipment. He ain't packing. Yeah, that's true. Anymore. Yeah. Uh, so yesterday's papers by the Rolling Stones is playing. Not not a great Stone song, in my opinion. I'm not a fan of this tune. Uh, Ted well, witnesses people reading apt. newspapers. Uh, yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. Which is why I'm sure is why it's there. Beard's waiting for him on the bench with a coffee. They do their beer toast with the coffee cups, which is nice. <laughs> and then we see Mister Man on the street who says, "Hey, wanker! If my father had a panic attack at Normandy, we'd all be speaking German." <laughs> right. 
<laughs> that hey. popped me so hard. <laughs> hey, you know, you know these people, don't you? People that go on about the war. Like you have oh, nothing yeah. to do with it, mate. Like, like it's, just... it's like that whole cultural identity. It's based on something that happened nearly it's 100 based, years ago. Based on yeah. something that happened, yeah, nearly 100 years ago. And they ago. have nothing to do with. Not like, at all. It's, no. It's funny. Ted says, yes, sir. Like he's getting scolded. And Mr. Man suddenly, out of the blue, stops and says, just do the work, pal. You'll be all right. And does this, and I could have cried. I'm like, I love that so much. Like, yeah, you know? he, he just, he like, he's, te again, Ted's got him. Like, yeah, yeah he's yeah, still yeah. going to call him a wanker. Because that's an established thing, but it's their thing. Yeah, he he's like, yeah, right. Like, I get it. Oh, it's so a really good. nice, really nice little moment. Yeah. And even I'm going to cry Bid, already. Bid does like a a bit yeah, of yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, all right, yeah. we've got him on board now as well. Sweet. I'm in trouble. Twenty minutes in, I'm tearing up. This is going to be a nightmare for me. Oh, it's <laughs> I know. Ted says, I assume you know what that was all about, right? And Beard says, nope. nope. And as he gets up, there's a tabloid in his back pocket. So yep. he's aware of what's happening. In Rebecca's office, she's received flowers from Edwin Akufu. Remember him, kids? Boy, there's something big going to happen there. And the card <laughs> reads, <laughs> yeah, the card reads, sorry for your loss. Keely Hint and Higgins thinks it's for the passing of Rebecca's dad. The card then also says, we will give Sam a very good home in Casablanca. This guy's got balls for days. He's, he's, as we find out later on, he is a maniac of the highest <laughs> order. <laughs> but also, he's so uh, good. it's been so long since we've seen Higgins as well. Like, And in this episode, he kills everything. Like, he does. He's so good. I forgot how much I love Higgins in this. He does, because at that, at that line, Higgins says, still, nice gesture. It's like, what? no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Rebecca says, uh, any idea which way Sam's leaning? He says, no idea. I'm just trying to play it chill. Whenever I see him in a hallway, I just give him a cool nod, you know, cool like nod. this. And he goes, throws his head up. And like, and Re goes, Rebecca goes, oh, and, and then Keely goes, that was cool. That was and cool. like, Higgins looks so made up. And he goes, <laughs> yeah, I saw it in a Denzel Washington film and thought, I'm having that. <laughs> It's, just like, it's, so, it's great. It's such a bizarre non sequitur, but it's great. So, for our female viewers, I'm going to break the code. This is dude's code. And when you say it out loud, every dude in the room goes, "Yeah, that's that's the truth. And this is the truth." So, pay attention, ladies. Men have two different nods. The first nod is non-threatening and means I don't mean anybody any trouble, and that's this one. Quick nod. How you doing? That's that's the quick nod. The nod that I says, that uh, yeah, you can involve facials and give a little smile, whatever. The The second version of this nod is one that says, we're still cool, but understand if we're not cool, I can take care of myself if I need to. And that nod is real quick, straight up, and you got to look like, I'll are we cool? Nod, if you will. Are we good? Yeah. So, yeah, I may have given those nods a time or two in my I head. just like the fact that Higgins cracked the code. Like, it's yeah. such a brilliant thing. Because <laughs> I've got really, like, so him good. practicing in his mirror at home. Like, his missus <laughs> yeah. coming in, bringing him sandwiches. Are you still practicing your nod? Yeah. You know, Keely's his biggest fan. She always loves every little oh, bit he does. Right? Keely's everyone's biggest fan. That's why she's so That's great. Fair. That's fair. Ted comes in trying to be his usual upbeat self. He says, what's the story, Paul Shorely? Paul Shorely. Paul, Sh Paul Shorey. I about can't get that out. Kelly says, so sorry about the article, Ted. And he says, oh, that's okay. You know what they say? No such thing as bad publicity, right? Although I think they might have been wrong about that, one, which is a bummer because they were spot on with the beer before liquor thing. I don't get that. What's that reference? Help me out. Um, it's, uh, well, I know it's, it's, it's wine before beer. Uh, you have nothing to fear. Beer before wine. No, beer before wine, you'll feel fine. Wine after beer, you'll have the fear. It's, it's, if you drink spirits before you drink beer, it will mess you up because oh. it goes through your system faster and therefore oh. makes you more drunk. I think is what it is. Um, but I also, it's just, it's, it's like a, such a Ted thing to do of like, yeah. there's no such thing as bad publicity except yeah, this, but in, again, still in a not be optimistic way. It's oh, Jay, that. Jay, is this, is this thing Ted's doing? We've always said, you know, in the beginning, we didn't know if it was really him. We were brand new to the show. It was brand new to us. 
but now we know this is him. Is this part of the facade he puts on so everybody else he can look he can appear okay in front of everybody else or no? Uh, I think a little bit of that is it, like because it, it is almost like he's like disarmingly, like mm. charming the way uh, the way he acts. Um, mm. But I think I think a lot of it's just down to just Ted being Ted as well. Mm. And Sharon's called him disarming before, which is that's a good reference. But it's, I think it's, it's it's that thing that harks back to his dad's suicide is that he had to then become like yeah. the man of the house for his mom. And mm. so he, it's it's the mask of that, and you never let anything show, and that's why it's it's built up to to this point. Yeah, well, you got to imagine as well, like obviously when that happened, he would have had people like kind of not pitying him, but like feel like feeling sorry for him, and mm. it's probably some, it's probably like his kind of suit of armor to like trick people into thinking he's doing better than he actually is. Yes. Yeah, it's it's yeah. I think you're right. I, I believe it's a combination of this is who he is, and plus, who he is 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 predicated on how he grew up and the situation he was involved in with his dad. So everything, as this show teaches us, one thing directly connects to the other thing. So absolutely, Rebecca tells him he has their full support, and Keely calls Trent Krim a dick for writing the piece. Ted defends Trent here and says he's just doing the gig. Rebecca says she's going to call the paper and find out who the anonymous source was. Ted yep. tells her there's no need to do that. Ted knows it's Nate because Trent yep. admitted to him at the end of episode 11, but no one else knows that's, but him and Trent. Someone who respects you exactly. is Nate. Is the line. And exactly. Yeah. Move. Ted says, fact is, everything they said was true. And unlike Lieutenant Caffey, Caffey actually <laughs> can't handle the truth. And we all know what this reference is if you know oh. a few good men. Of course. So there you go. Ted, Ted's brain. I know, right? <laughs> a random pop culture explosion. But to just have that lined up, ready to go. Is... All the time. Yeah. 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 Keely, Keely tells him. Yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Keely tells him no press till after the match. And Rebecca says, just concentrate on beating Brentford. Higgins says, yes, because if we lose, it would it will kill me. And then he turns <laughs> to Ted and says, Please don't Ted, lose Ted. I beg you. Like he's all, he's all worried. Oh, so good. Higgins. So good. He says, "Hey, don't you worry, Hig Newton. I'm on it like I'm on it like a bonnet." Hig Newton. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's um. So uh, for Higgins, the the reason he's like he's kind of saying that as well is because if they don't get promoted, his promoted, his job gets ten times harder. Because mm. of obviously like club finances, so it's like oh shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. As we established basically, earlier on, basically, if they get promoted, they get like a massive windfall of cash. Whereas, yeah, uh, you, uh, I can't. It must have been very early on in in this season when we're doing it. We you did give a big thing of like is it parachute mm. payments and all that. So yeah, yeah. like you can survive one year in relegation, but then after that, it becomes infinitely it harder. Can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. sure. Rebecca's eating her biscuits, which Ted did bring to her as he always does. She goes, "Oh God, these taste like shit." And Ted <laughs> goes, "Oh yeah, well it was a rough night. I am now absolutely positive I switched the salt and sugar, and I'm sorry about that." And he tries to take him. <laughs> she goes, to "Take him back!" And she snatches him. She's like, "No, no, no, no!" And she stops, and she's letting it hit her. And she's like, "Now it's interesting." She's like a sneaky, salty bitch. Ted says, like, Heather Locklear, Melrose Place, am I right? He <laughs> goes, oh, yeah. And they all do the AFC Richmond Club thing where they go, yeah, yeah. Yeah. King's like, that's a, that's a perfect way to describe her. <laughs> <laughs> that was really nice. Oh, I love those it's moments. Just those little Ted bits where everyone just, we get another one later on as well. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, I love those bits where everyone just goes random for a bit. <laughs> so we go to the locker room and Sam is coming in. I had a question for you on this one, Jay, because I, maybe I've missed it. He finds a box in his locker with a note from Edwin that says, I can't wait to see you in this. Hope you don't mind. I picked the number. It's a green Casablanca shirt with the number 10 on it. Is there a significance to the number 10 or am I missing it somewhere? Uh, yeah, it's it's ba basically like 10 kind of like associated with like the sort of talisman of the club. Like, oh, it, really? If you, it's you. It's usually like you, you, there's a lot of like famous players there, um, like Zinedine Zidane, Alessandro Del Piero, um, just to name a few, who kind of wore the number ten, um, who were kind of like the the catalyst of the team. Um, 
So it's it's probably a number Sam would want like strive to hold. You usually tend to find like number tens like number tens are a number that a lot of like midfielders will want as well as seven or eight. Um and then like uh number nines like associated with strikers. So it's 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 one of those things where it's 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 a lot of like footballers have superstition as well about like the jersey they wear. Like um I'm trying to think off the top of my head now who who's done who's done that recently. Um no, I can't think of anyone. But like the you you, t- you tend to find sometimes like a player will like come to the club and part of like, their contract will be I want this number. Um oh Cristiano Ronaldo, he's number se- he's a number seven. So nice. All his all of his branding is like CR seven and stuff like that. So Ooh. he he has it like into his contract that it's like I have to wear the number seven jersey at whatever team oh, I'm playing right. for. That's I didn't cool. realize it was such a, suspi- uh, um, a superstitious bunch. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 NBA has that to some degree with guys that when they change teams they'll they want to take their number with them. Sometimes they can, sometimes they can. It's tough. Hey, hey, kids, Tom Clark here, and did you know the very podcast you're listening to right now is available on boinkstudios.com. B-O-I-N-K, Boink Studios, is the home of Tom Clark's main event, Tom Clark's 6M podcast, and Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast. Visit the site today for links to every podcast platform, social media, special announcements, and a lot more. Check out the site and bookmark today, boinkstudios.com. If you get to a team where they've already got a star player wearing that number, you ain't getting that number. I mean, it's yeah, but it's yeah. like Michael Jordan with the number twenty three. Mm-hmm. Like he had, well, had twenty three every jersey he wore, didn't he? True, um, he did. There was a couple of exceptions. He he came back when he came back from retirement. He wore forty five, I think, because no, no. yeah, he didn't want to wear the because his dad had only ever seen him play in twenty three. And his dad's murder was part of the thing that led him to retire to begin with. Uh, so when he came back, he decided, but then he changed his mind because he he started wearing it as a tribute more than anything else. And then there was another time, yeah, where um, his jersey was stolen before the game, and he was forced <laughs> to just throw on a jersey that had a different number on it. So I think there was only two times he ever wore a different number. Oh, well. Oh. Yeah, I'm a basketball nerd sometimes. No, it's, I, again, I didn't know anything. I just thought numbers were randomly given out, oh, depending on where you were on the field. Like, mm. yeah, so that, all defenders wear one kind of number, and so yeah, it's yeah. easier to find them in a. Yeah, fire. so it's <laughs> it, it's it's normally done like obviously as well, like uh, like the way the team sheet was works. If it's like a friendly and people don't have like the normal numbers, it'd just be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Well, um. Yeah, but uh, educational. Yeah, I mean, Joe, you and I couldn't do this show without Jay. There, I mean, you know more than I know about this sport, and Jay knows more than both of us put together. I'm sure. So, like, it's. <laughs> I mean, that ain't a high bar to hit, but yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to help you out, Jay. Look what happens. I swear. No, I, 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 I honestly, genuinely, I didn't know it was such a, yeah. a, a, a big thing. I just thought you put a shirt on and they give you a number based on where you are on the field. I didn't mm. realize you could be like, nope, 69, that's my number. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That better be it. Better be on my jersey <laughs> when I get there. Well, the, there's a so, lot of, well, like, um, like there's a lot of clubs that have, obviously, if they've had, like, a famous player wearing that jersey. <gasps> like that's You the retire thing, the like, number. No, no, yeah. not sometimes oh. they do, sometimes they don't. But like, um, obviously, if there's like a if there's like a famous player who's like associated with that number, like at Newcastle, for example, they've got Alan Shearer, who's like, Ooh. and Jack, Jackie Milburn before who were like both wore the number nine. So that's like that. It's 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 one of those things where whoever gets that jersey, there's a lot of there's a ton of pressure on them to then mm. wow. live up live up to that. Because this is there was, this is genuinely fascinating. Because mm. they had a they had a player wearing the number nine, and he he didn't it, it went it went to his head. He was he was shit when he wore number nine. He changed the jersey to number seven. And now he's one of the best players they've got. Jeez, shut up! Really? That's funny. Yeah. What it's, athletes athletes are highly it's superstitious. Top. It's the truth. Yeah, yeah there there's a lot of superstition. Oh, it I is feel bad for sure. Do shirts and skins now. Yeah. 
So we move to that. Jamie comes into Ted's office and Beard is reading The Pyramid, <laughs> The History of Soccer Tactics by Jonathan Wilson. So oh. I got the book this time. And by the way, this is the same book he was reading on the plane in the first episode yeah. of the series. But have you noticed now, there's loads and loads of post-it tabs like in the mm. sides of it. Like, well done. On, on what, what, what must be every page, because there's hundreds of these things in there. So mm -hmm. so what's, what's interesting about it, like, this it to me is that Nate was was banging on wasn't he about like wanting to get credit for yep. like various things and you look at like the work that Beard's putting in and to like mm. better himself tactically and he doesn't get any credit you just no because he's, he's it's expected of him. he just like him and Roy would just literally said yeah. it's it's the job the job yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole thing of, you know, we thought trees fought for sunlight, but yeah. uh, it turns out they have a, an ecosystem and they share the sunlight. But, yeah. but yeah. Great bit. That's a great bit. This so is Jamie. Jamie. And Jamie in this yes. stuff, when he comes in, he goes, is Roy here? No. Beard says, <laughs> All right, Beard bye. Says, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't Beard says, I don't hear any grunting, which is good. <laughs> and he goes, is that a Yes. <laughs> So yeah, he's uh, then Nate comes in looking for Roy for a different reason, and uh, Beard asks if he's seen the paper. Nate stutters and stammers, and look, w Beard has figured this out, and it took a half Beard. second. If it took that long, right? Because there's only well, so many he, people in the room. Well, people that know, and he's, that's it. He's poirot the shit out of it. Yeah, he knows mm -hmm. who it is. He knows Roy ain't gonna betray him. He knows Rebecca ain't gonna betray him. Higgins wouldn't betray do. him. Yep. Higgins is never going to. He wouldn't. Yep. Only no. leaves Nate. Yeah. Like, it ain't even that difficult to work mm. out. No. But yes, again, Nate, it... Nate thinking he's cleverer than everyone. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, there's that scene, isn't there, where uh, Ted like tells like his inner circle, like Diamond Dogs and Roy. And yeah. uh, I, it, Roy. It, it, <laughs> back. It's, not, it's not hard to figure out out of those like sort of five people in the room and then the other person who obviously knows is Rebecca um mm. so and Dr. Sharon also, it's like, not hard to again Beard has watched Nate from the mm. shadows all the way mm. through this and knows what he's becoming obviously Beard's not going to do it he's loyal to Ted to like the end oh um man. Roy Roy is also extremely loyal like mm. to a fault, so he's not gonna, <laughs> he's not going to. So it, it has also, to. Also, it like, would involve him talking to Trent Krim, and you know Roy's not going to do yeah. that off his own bat. <laughs> Good. Point. Well, yeah, we we find out why in season three. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we do. Like in oh, in God. episode one, actually, of season three. So there you go. See connectivity, children. Oh, shadowing. Yeah. Yeah, all over the place. Roy comes in. He's the next in line to come in, and he see it. And Beard tells him that Jamie's looking for him. Roy says, "Oh, is he?" And he goes in the locker room and goes, "Oi, Todd!" <laughs> and Jamie just turns around like, but everyone else is like talking like, to Jamie, and they oof. all melt away because angry Roy is in the room, <laughs> and he's like outside. Like, oh, okay, and like you Good. see Todd like shrink back yeah. and become like a little yeah, and it's. Oh. Uh, do you know as when when Roy comes in, um, Nate like sort of pats him on the tummy as he walks in. Mm. Just a little I bit. Know of he's thing trying to I get noticed. his attention. Yeah. Or I, I, again, because I mean they're both looking for Roy for essentially the same thing, like mm. doing stuff to Kiwi. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it's a very nice parallel between the two of how this is handled. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh... They, they both, again, want to talk to Roy for different reasons, but Roy has made it known. So now Jamie knows his his head's on the chopping block now. <laughs> and he, he pulls him to the boot room where most serious conversations in the show have been happening lately is in the boot room. And Jamie says, uh, can I say something first? And he goes, yeah, okay, that's a good idea because when I'm done, you won't have any teeth left. You'll need them for the talking bit. <laughs> you need them for the talking bit. <laughs> like, oh, as threats go, it's A, it's, very wordy, but also yes. brilliant. <laughs> And Jamie, uh, Jamie spills the beans without being tempted to do so or being provocated to do so. He just flat out tells him and tells him he, he admitted to her that he still loved her. And he said, look, it's the funeral. And, you know, it does something to me. I ain't used to being around dead people. And 
this striking a chord with Roy because it also did something to Keeley being at the funeral and being in that situation. And him so as well. and him. Like, exactly. Yeah. And I take it all back when I said the other week um about Jamie not understanding. He he has gone away and gone, Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Like he has yeah. learned that that was not the time to do that. So fair play to the boy. He is he is well, growing. It, mm-hmm. It's I think that's why Roy kind of like forgives him and like respects him because it's literally that you go back to for the children where Roy talks yeah. about Jamie not being accountable for his actions mm-hmm. and it's Jamie showing accountability for the fact that uh, he's yes. done something that he shouldn't have done. It's obviously something that's Roy's gonna fucking kill him for if he doesn't say anything about it. Yeah. So he's him him apologizing and like holding himself accountable is in Roy's head. That's like shit, that's what I wanted them to do. <laughs> yeah. But I can't really punch him now because he's how no, I can't oh. punch him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why Roy just goes again, excellent face acting from uh, yeah. Brett Goldstein. Uh yeah. he just goes fuck and stomps off. <laughs> And, and then, then you... as always in as always in the boot room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Will's you can out. you Will's can hear. Just there and he's yeah. Like, uh, I didn't say anything when you came in. You can hear him. He goes, "Ooh, yeah." <laughs> and then Jamie's just like, "All right, all right." And that's all he that's all he says to him. So uh, we go to Keely's office. I love that bit. Uh, we go to Keely's office. She's on the phone. She says, it definitely sounds both helpful and compassionate, but I don't think that you moderating a session between Coach Lasso and a celebrity psychiatrist is the best move right now. All his attention is on Brentford. Thank you very much. Hangs up the phone right. and says, fuck you, Piers Morgan. As a, as, a, as a trio, can we just give one big fuck you, Piers Morgan as well? Like, yeah. I'm down with one, that. One, two, three. Fuck, fuck you, Piers, Piers Morgan. Fuck you, Piers Morgan. <laughs> From your friends at Two Nations Under Ted at Ted Lasso Podcast. Uh, absolute scumbag bottom feeder. Yeah. Yeah. We tried Get to him give him to seat. we tried to give him to you, America, and you were like, We don't want this. We've got our own problems you have him back. We got enough yeah. people like that over here. Yeah. And now, now they're sending James Corden back as well. What's going on? Oh Christ. Yeah. Can he we can not like his... Osama bin Laden in the in oh, over the Atlantic? Uh, I was gonna say, can't we just put like an oil rig like between like the two nations and just like Anyone that we don't want, just dump, yeah, just dump them all on there and let yeah. them have the fucking echo chamber of nonsense. Oh, it's like the island idea. of, it's like the island Jay of Jay for Prime toys. Minister. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I, I, if I, I can vote for you, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would vote for you just on that one thing. We're going to build a big platform in the ocean, and then all the dickheads can go and live on it, and we can just get on with our lives. Yep, yeah, sweet. Uh, yeah. How much money? Do and you then, yeah. and then randomly. Randomly, we sink the platform and then pull it back up. We don't tell him when we did it. We don't oh, advertise like a, like it. A, like a saying shit Atlantis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. But I don't care. Donovan won't be writing songs about that one. I don't think so. <laughs> Not going to be doing a tribute show for that, are they? So, uh, man, that was fun. So then <laughs> Keely, she goes to something on a laptop, and we get this line. We get it like three times. We get, holy fucking shit, and she goes nuts over something she sees. We go down the pitch. The guys are ready for training, and Ted rounds them up, wants to tell them about what they saw. And let's keep in mind that Ned is – not Ned, excuse me, Nate has been doing some eye-rolling. He does a lot moving forward, eye-rolling. Oh, this guy. There's a lot of this, but then there's also moments ridiculous. where he goes. And like, there's a moment of like – You can tell. Realization, or he's yeah. – passing the seesaw up in his he's head pass- yep he's justified so much what he's done and what he's going to do moving forward that he yeah it's it's a thing you guys know he's excusing his actions in his own mind but ted comes clean about what they saw in the morning paper and on his phones and he says i still get the paper because well you know you can't cut cartoons out of a phone <laughs> right and zorro this, says this, another one of one of the great ted people going off on random tangents bit and Zorro's yes. like, yeah but um, you can you can screenshot them and send them. And mm-hmm. then McAdoo is like, "That's copyright infringement, bro." Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's just like what? And then Danny Re- um he's like, "Yeah, but you can't also put cartoons on the fridge." And mm-hmm. then Danny is like, "My fridge has a TV in." And then they're all like, "Oh, really? How's that?" Like, yeah. it's just yeah. to... <laughs> this it's has got awesome. away from Ted so much. <laughs> like, 
It's again, it's the second time we get that bit, but it's so good. Oh, it's so I, good. I never tire of them because it's just like, I, I, in my heart, I want to believe they just went, we're going to roll the cameras and just do stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know it isn't. It's probably very heavily scripted, but it just, because it just feels like that sort of thing people do. Yeah. Where you're like, oh yeah, that is, that. yeah, it, it, it's it's just beautiful. Like, in, in and my, also in, Danny is always the linchpin of them as well. He is. In my head, it's always been, they know the line's coming from Ted or Beard or whoever, but maybe they're told, you guys react how you want to. How would you guys react Improvise. if I said Work this? Work around it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. In my head, that's how it is anyway. And then Ted gives him a great talk, full of Tedisms, but full of harsh truth oh. as well. He, this he, is really he, good. He kind of blames himself for not yep. telling them. Yep, he does. Because that's what he, he does. Uses, again, he uses it as a, as a, as a teaching thing tool as well though he's like i i i should have told you because i don't want you not to trust me and they're all like no we got you it's fine like they're all like th we know he's got the team at this point but this is just one of those things that even in a moment of what ted perceives as weakness mm. he they're doing to him what he's done to them like they're just they're just as a as a as a unit it's mm. a really nice bit it is, and and everything he says is great. He mentions giving a Chicago Bulls, Bulls starter jacket to Janelle Rhodes in his sophomore year, and she's and you know he never saw it again. I ain't getting and, that uh, back. He ain't also getting that back. Like um, as as the famous basketball man, like Jean Luc Obi Wan Gandalf, and I'm like, what? So happened? we know John Wooden, head great head oh, uh, coach of UCLA college basketball, who's one of Ted's heroes and idols and whatnot. Uh, great coach, by the way, kids, in case you didn't know. Yeah, he calls him John Obi-Wan Gandalf. Um, even Beard goes. Yeah, he just point. perks <laughs> up. He says, it is our choices, gentlemen, what that show what we truly are far more than our abilities. Now, he wasn't actually quoting Wooden here, kids. Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars or Gandalf. He was quoting Dumbledore from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> Get that. <laughs> oh. That's crazy, right? That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, he says, now I hope y'all can forgive me for what I've done because I sure as heck wouldn't want any of y'all to hold anything back. Isaac goes, nah, we got you, coach. Awesome. They all they are their own little ways. Like, you remember the end of the dance routine last episode mm -hmm. where they did the struck a pose at the end and they all do their own one. They all, it's all just little bits like, yeah, we got you and stuff like that. But then I, <laughs> he's just like, and when we find him, permission to, uh, what hit him in the stomach and thighs with socks full of Colin soap. says it, yeah. Colin, Colin sorry, <laughs> and I'm like, All right, Colin, uh, Jesus. That, well, that's the thing then... as well. It's like Nate's reaction to that, like, he looks like yeah. terrified, yeah. Then, he should be. Oh, he knows what he's done, yeah. But then yeah. when Ted like calls it off, he looks, he looks relieved, but he doesn't look, he still doesn't look thankful. He looks like, No, oh god, again, another one of those great escalating bits, though, because Colin's like that, and then they're all like, Yeah, we're gonna fuck him up. And I'm like, Did like, you no, hear no. Bummer Catch goes out of the blue? Bummer Catch goes, Follow the money. I'm like, What? What does that oh, have to do with that. anything? <laughs> no idea where that came from. <laughs> like, out of the blue, he's, he's like this when he says it, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, you're right, I, Joe. He took it. He had his back in the end. He defended him. That's twice now he's saved Nate's hide. Yeah. Rebecca Ted and knows. now. Yeah. Ted knows, yeah. but Nate doesn't know that Ted knows. Mm, well said. He says, I'm going to nip that talk in the butt right now. Beer says, it's <laughs> bud. It's bud, not butt, coach. He goes, it is? Cause of flowers, right? And Beer goes, horticulture, baby. Horticulture, baby. That's awesome. <laughs> Beard's got that line locked and loaded. Anytime oh. he needs to deliver it, he's going to deliver it. Ted wants the team to work on Nate's false nine play from last episode. And Jamie asks, what are we going to do with that thing? And it's, it's not big... when, he goes, when he goes, right, <laughs> not forget, before we get to that bit, which is a brilliant bit as well, but he goes, yeah. Nate's false nine, and you see Nate's face. Yes. And well, he like. He's committed. Mm. He's like, yeah. He's like, mm. like it, yeah, this is my well, play. With the thing with this, so, which is like, with Nate, which so in the last episode he's complaining that he doesn't get credit for it. Mm -hmm. And he's then Ted Nate's false nine. Yeah, Ted credits him for it, and then instantly Nate twists it to say, "Well, now you're crediting me for it, so you can make me a scapegoat when it doesn't work." 
Yeah, exactly. He also called, he refers to him as like Nate Dog, Super Nate, all the way through this. Like he's still doing what he's always done, but yeah. Nate is too far. Um, you know, his midichlorians have been corrupted. He's he's so <laughs> he's so far down the dark hole that he he can't see what what it was. He, yeah, but then just, also he's just about to meet with Rupert, who's going to tell him about Darth Plague, just the wise. Yeah, it's, it, order. <laughs> The order is, is about to go in, yeah. Uh, but yeah, then Jane goes, what are we going to do about this? And <laughs> fucking hell. The helicopter is Yeah, the is black still helicopter. There. So are we like, to assume that Akufu's been there the whole time and we just didn't see no, him No, I'm the assuming end? Akufu just leaves helicopters everywhere. <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> just leaves oh. them. Everywhere. Just leaves them, just parks him and forgets where he's put a helicopter. So, I'll just get another one. I'm a billionaire. Yeah, yeah that's true. So, How um, much did a helicopter cost, Michael? $10? I have it anyway. It's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that it's it's only it's only been like a day, hasn't it? Because the um, training for the Brentford game, which this is two days away, and he says, ooh, yeah, Sam, I, I would, he I would says say Sam's in... got Sam's got three days, which is after the Brentford game. To give his answer, also that jersey's in his locker, not in a package, as if it had been shipped and mailed. So you assume that he had it with him and popped it in his locker. So yeah, it would have to be in a day or two after. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, my idea was funnier. <laughs> I mean, he might he might still just leave helicopters. He might still leave if random helicopters. In a different, if at the end he left in a different helicopter, that would have been tremendous. Ted tells him to go to the north off. field. Single-use helicopter. Yeah. Single-use. It's disposable helicopters. So uh, Ted tells him to head of the North Field, and if they hustle, I'll count. It'll count as your cardio for the day. And Roy says, "Scram!" That's a 1950s Whistle. reference yeah. about like, "Scram, scram, you whistles. kids, get out of here!" Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then he has to say, "Whistle." It's great. Whistle, whistle. whistle. Yeah. <laughs> Keely goes to see Higgins, and Higgins is holding two small dogs. This bit feels like it takes forever. Oh, he says this. this is, I really love this bit because it's got. I love this. In it. This is mascot idol semifinals. One of these two contestants will be our new mascot. Will it be Macy Greyhound or Tina Feyhound? <laughs> and you know that's not their names, but Higgins has named them that after Cindy Crawford. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Big on puns is Higgins. Good call. It's always women, or you know, well, I say, yeah, girls out. You get it. The dogs are from Barkingham Palace, back from episode one of season two, Goodbye, Goodbye Earl. We are connecting in this episode back to basically everywhere else. Oh, it's also, like the uh, it's the same old boy who was Earl's uh, owner as well, isn't it? Who's yes. There. It's the old I man, yeah. can't remember if he has a name, but but the, the bit with the uh, the breeder is one of the most awkward, awkward bits ever. And I love it. Mrs. Campbell. Ted Ted doesn't do like Ted Lasso doesn't do like <laughs> oddly weird, creepy bits that often. Mm -mm. But mm -mm. she's like, big fan of yours. And Keely goes, Oh, okay. Yeah. And she's shaking her hand. And she goes, like, no. Big fan of yours. And like keeps hold of her hand. And Keely, like, you can see Keely trying to pull away, but can't. And yeah. it, oh, it's so good. And then she kisses her hand. She kisses her hand. <laughs> and I'm like, and Keely's like, oh. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Which, so, I don't uh, know, maybe it's a foreshadowing to what happens in season three. I was 100%. 100%. percent <laughs> Oh, I agree. Yeah, 100%. I don't, I don't think it was. I think it was just a bit no. they did. But I think you're right. So I, I think they popped it there as a, not as a, look what's going to happen, but I do think they popped it there with intention. I believe you're oh, right. As we've yeah. always said, nothing in Ted Lasso is not there for a reason. That's it. So they go out and Killy wants to talk to Higgins and uh, she tells him that the money people who backed banter want to finance her opening her own PR firm and she's squealing. Well, I'm glad you came to me first. Yes. <laughs> uh, and not, it's and great. not Ted or Roy or their training or Rebecca. She's doing something else. I'm happy to be on the list. <laughs> yes. So, uh, She's scared, of scared, she's scared of telling Rebecca that she's leaving. And Higgins has all this wrong. He thinks, well, you're intimidated by Rebecca. And Keely says, no, she's one of my best friends. He goes, oh, and you believe that leaving her would be a betrayal usually preserved for the level of Greek mythology. She says, no. Again, 
just I just great don't want to appear line. ungrateful. Yeah. Yeah. And then Joe, she he delivers a line you said earlier. A good mentor hopes you will move on. A great mentor knows you will. That's some Emmy worthy writing right there. That's oh. wonderfully done. And, but then Keely goes, Oh, I like that. And Higgins goes, I know I just came up with it. And he's just like Big Camp Higgins is so good. It's true. <laughs> he's great. I love Higgins. We see Sam outside. He's walking and he's on the phone with his dad. He's going to give Edwin an answer after the match against Brentford. His dad is encouraging him, telling him to let the universe give him the answer. The universe told him to marry his mother and to buy Bitcoin in 2009. Bitcoin. 2009! Like, he's, yeah. he thinks that's hilarious. And uh, Sam looks over, and we knew this was going to happen because we saw Richmond we, jersey, and you we, knew. Have, have, you never, have you never seen the thing of, I think it was like a Doom tournament or something, where the first prize got like 500 quid, and the fourth prize was 25 Bitcoins? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So like it's a fun little I I I I don't know, I'm sure it's not a callback to that, but it's it's yeah. He he bought them at the right time, and that's why. Interesting. Like, yeah. yeah. It's big now, kids, in case you didn't know. This this, this yeah, if you uh, we have minted some limited edition two nations under Ted NFTs. Um I don't even know what any of those words mean. <laughs> No fucking thanks. Um, no, it's all fallen out. The 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 the, 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 the con is over. Like, um, the, but the this, whole this NFT bit, again. This was one of those bits that made me cry. Yeah, it's 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 big. The whole NFT, real quick. The whole NFT thing as digital art form is fine. When you start when you start selling those things for millions of dollars, that is beyond wonky to me. If you're an it's artist and yeah, if you're art if you're an artist and and you like to use the digital realm, more power to you. NFT fine, but like. I was up close and personal with that industry. And like a lot of it, I'm like, you paid how much for that? Yeah. No chance. Am I paying I can that just much right for that? Click safe, mate. Yeah. I, well, that's the thing. <gasps> I can just click screenshot click. it. It's you digital. Yeah. It's copyright it. infringement, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. To get back to what you were saying, Joe, one of the guys on the pitch on that pitch is wearing uh, Sam's shirt, which is I a nice touch. But yeah. It was a mud auntie. I, I think there's two lads wearing the one's got a Nobby Sanders shirt and the other one's got the Richmond shirt on, but it's got yeah. the blacked out bar in the middle. And that's, the, I think, the thing that hits him more than the the fact that the guy's wearing a Nobby Sanders shirt. Yeah. Mm. Because he's like, shit, I made a difference. Mm. I, I, I did something here. And I don't know if I can do that at one of those massive, you know, as we said last episode, one of those clubs where they just, pile money in and get the best players it's yeah yeah like sam's still fairly like kind of grassrootsy right he, he is he wants to use his position for the greater good the greater good greater good well the, at the next scene at the next scene is at roy's place have we ever been to roy's place in this show i don't think is we it have. Roy's? pretty sure because he's parked in the front and she's parked behind him and i don't recognize that kitchen oh so i assume I... that's roy's place Oh, the outside looks I different. It was Keely's. I assumed that Roy just like lives out of his car. Mm. <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's yeah. at Roy's, but yeah. So she comes clean, or excuse me, he comes clean to her and tells him what Jamie did. Uh, and he's like, Look, you know, he came to it on his own. And she says, What'd you do? Punch him? Headbutt him? Did you murder him? And he goes, Worse. I fucking forgave him. It's disgusting, oh. isn't it? Disgusted, isn't it? <laughs> but I thought the fact that Keely goes when he says uh, Jamie came to me and spoke, which was I didn't say anything. Yeah, 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 for real. Mm -hmm. She says, "I'm really proud of you. I fully support that." And he grunts at her. And uh, of course, she says, "I have some news to tell you." He goes, "For fuck's sake, don't tell me Ted tried to get off with you and all." <laughs> it's great. Then she tells him the news, the PR firm, and of course, he's excited for her. He says. Holy fucking shit. Second Holy time this episode. Shit. He says, look at you, the boss. Not going to have time for me anymore. Foreshadowing. See, I think at this point, like Roy has realized that, yeah. especially after the last episode, that this is on borrowed time. Yeah. And I think Roy might be trying to look for a way out at this point. I think Roy sees the way, I, I think Roy sees the exits coming. Not that he's looking yeah. for it, but he sees it. Okay. He sees the exits that, ahead. Yeah. But then what happens? Because he really loves Literally, her. the next section is mm -hmm. is one of those where it's like, uh, we're done. 
We go to uh, the pub with Ted and Beard. Beard, this is very funny. Beard and Ted are at the table, and Beard's looking at his phone. He goes, just a second, it's Jane. Ted says, how's that going? We broke up. Oh, no, we're back on. Yeah. And he's, like, happy, and I'm like, man, this is, oh, uh, this back and I, forth. See, I want it to, like, I'm looking into it, and, like, um, you look at the crisps they're eating. Um, Coach Beard is eating salt and vinegar, plain crisps. Whereas I think Ted is eating blue walkers, which I think are cheese and onion. They are cheese and onion. Yeah. I don't mm. know whether that means anything, but again, mm. I just thought I'd make a note of it. <laughs> well, you never can You never can tell. I didn't notice any of that, but for all well, we know, that revealed the end of the show. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So was Beard, was Beard eating... Um, was he was eating just, red. So it's the colors of Richmond. Oh fuck off! Yeah, it is. Jesus, absolute shit hawk, <laughs> man. <laughs> How does stuff like that keep happening here? My I God. mean, I'm glad I brought it up now because that's about the yeah. tick in the weird things that we've discovered. Box. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, May brings him their beers, and Ted sees someone reading a tabloid with him on the cover. You can tell he's really stressing over this, right? Do you love films that have the same plot over and over and over and over again with only slightly different looking people in the main roles, but just don't have time to watch them all? You do? Then simply listen to Hallmark of Greatness, the only podcast that takes you through such masterpieces as Love at Sea, Love at Christmas, and A Volcano Sacrifice for Love. See a pattern here? Available wherever you get podcasts from, and also find us on social media by looking for Hallmark of Greatness. She says, don't worry, it'll wash out in the cycle. It always does. Then she grabs the paper from this guy, and he says, I was finished anyway. You guys recognize him? He's the one from the bars. It's the one that May went on a date with, isn't it? Uh Uh-huh. In that episode. Yeah, yeah. And I'm fairly sure he's like like an actual person. He looks really familiar. And I can't. I could could just look it up. uh, Just just vamp for time. Well, (laughs) Roy, our, our, we get back to the scene you mentioned, uh, Joe. This is Roy uh, telling her we're going to open the champagne. And she goes, what? No, I thought we were saving that for something really special. And he says, well, we didn't open it when your mom moved back up north. We didn't open it when England got zero points in Eurovision. And we didn't want to open it when the neighbor ran over their own snake. And she says, that was nasty. He's, <laughs> she goes, he says, so we're drinking it. And then they get the pictures of the Vanity Fair article. Yeah. He says, they better not have use any pictures of me smiling. She goes, like, that exists. And then uh, Kelly opens the article on her iPad, and Roy goes, wow. Because it's amazingly great. The headline is, Keely Jones, woman on top. And we find out, kids, no pictures of Roy were used. Keely's very upset. She says, that is not cool. I'm going to reach out and change that. She says, don't you dare. This is how, again, guys, Roy Kent went from being one-night stand Roy Kent you know who needs a watch and a phone? Roy can't. <laughs> not that he's not that he's a douchebag, but it, it's all sort of very laid back and casual. To telling another human being, don't you change a fucking thing? You look powerful. You're fucking gorgeous. Powerful. It's awesome. What a great moment that is for that character, man. Yeah, it's again. It's along with the bit earlier where he's like, "I forgave him." It's disgusting, isn't it? And this <laughs> is like. This is how much Roy has grown. Like, yeah. A, he didn't punch Jamie, he forgave him. And B, right. he's like, yeah, it's wonderful. It's, it's a nice thing. So oh. we uh, we head back to the pub now. We're doing this back and forth dance here, kids. So Beard says, you going to say anything? He goes, well, I mean, eventually, yeah. You may have noticed through the years, I can be quite loquacious. He <laughs> says, no, no, to Nate, the anonymous source. What makes you think it was Nate? Beard just... Page gives, gives him, him that look of like, come on, yeah. mate. Like, you know me. I know you. We both know it's Nate. Of course. He says, you know my philosophy when it comes to cats, babies, and apologies, coach. You got to let them come to you. <laughs> he says, that's not going to happen. Some people need a little push. He goes, well, I ain't pushing nobody. He says, I think it'll help. He says, Nate will be fine. He goes, no, it'll help you. You keep trying to hold all this in. I'm afraid your mustache is going to pop off. Mustache is going to come off. <laughs> he says, then I'll look like that fella from The Hangover. Beard says, Bradley Cooper? And he goes, oh, you're too good to me. Which is a nice little line. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> Beard tells him he likes his mustache. So 
<laughs> the uh, the next day, Keely goes to see Rebecca to tell her to tell her, and they are bawling. This is this moment is so oh. funny. They're like, oh, "I'm so happy for you," and they're like, "It is so awesome." It's it's literally from season one where Keely comes yeah. in and takes her shoes off and sits on the couch yeah. and he's just like making herself at home to this. It's essentially what a year, mm. year and a yeah. bit, and yeah. they have become tight as anything. Like it's it's a really it's just like it's. Again, it harks back to the mentor thing, which I think is like a the running theme throughout this this episode particularly. Is that yeah, Rebecca's primed her for this. Oh and yeah. Like you, we all know the day's gonna come when, you know, the bird fly flees the nest. But it is just it is really well done. And yeah. Oh. Yeah, well done. You said it. She said uh you helped this panda become a lion. That's a callback to season one, kids. Yep. If we remember, Rebecca's very happy for her. She then gets a text, and Rebecca says, "Holy fucking shit!" So that's three. That's the third. That's the tree. The, the fire triangle of holy fucking shit. Rupert's boss has bought West Ham United. Jay, we mentioned this last episode. You cannot own yeah. shares in two different clubs, so that's why I sold the shares back. Has so, this happened that you know of on any level where it's been maybe that quick or no? Uh, no, it would it would take a lot more time. Well, I, I don't know because like the the time in between the funeral and and Rupert buying the club would have you'd assume would have been a couple of weeks, wouldn't it? So it it can happen that quick, does it? Absolutely not, because the the Premier League dig their heels in when it comes to like vetting you know, out like owners for clubs. Um, Mm. literally like it's it's taken it it can take like not years but it can take around a year for them to do all the checks they need um but yeah so with with the with the shares and clubs it's they they can own shares and clubs that are in different leagues but they can't play in the same competition so i didn't know that so like like obviously that's why he's had to get rid of the Richmond ones because it looks like they're getting promoted. So he wouldn't oh. have been allowed to have owned the shares in two teams. Like he wouldn't have been able oh, allowed to what play a, West Ham. What a dick though, because it's like mm. he tried to play it off as as Rebecca said, a funeral gift. Oh yeah. Like it's and, and as a generous thing, but he's actually just like it's him being two moves ahead of bit. Rebecca in that one. That's why she even you says did, like you did say this at the time, but you wouldn't give us the information. Yeah. Ah you Oh, so oh, Jay would it, I don't know Jay, who I hate if, more now. <laughs> Jay, if you were just if you were just truly a fan and a businessman, you would you would you would own one team in the Premier League and buy shares in a team that would that's on such a lower level that you're helping them along the way and but they're like years away from getting promoted, maybe something like that. Um not necessarily. So like uh the way like Man City do it, for example, they have um they have uh, Sheikh Mansour who owns Man City, but then they have the I think it's City Holdings Group, and they own like uh, New York FC, uh, oh, Melbourne. Uh, interesting. They own a they own a team in the Spanish league as well, and gotcha. it's it's essentially it's essentially it's it works as like two like it's like two different things. It builds up the profile of football in that country because they're obviously tied to like one of the biggest teams mm. in the world. But also, it gives City then the first option to, if there's like a really good player, they can then go, oh yeah, well we'll we'll buy them, like um, a feeder system, pretty much yeah. yeah. And they 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 send like they'll send players on loan to like the the smaller clubs just to kind of like develop them and then bring them back. So it it is it is done like that. That's how you'd like kind of see it more as opposed to like putting money into like a smaller team to try and get it ele- them elevated um but yeah, yeah like with with um as i say with with the, this one in particular it's more of a case of obviously as i say rupert's not allowed to own west ham and shares in richmond he'd have to mm. have one or the other he, he couldn't mm. yeah. yeah exactly yeah. conflict of interest that uh that is I mean, great again i've info. learned so much today oh dude like, same yeah same that's great info so again, uh jay yeah. a little 
mortarboard like teacher's hat to put on. <laughs> because these bits, it feels like no, it feels like, I generally didn't know that. I, I, Should they have like a football dangling off it, like on the, like the string? A hundred percent. I'd come up with something, something nice besides the little the little graphic that says Jay's football facts, what well, Professor <laughs> Jay or something. So yeah, uh, well the the funny bit coming out of this is that Keeley is assured to know that Rupert's still just a selfish. Well, Rebecca says he's still just a selfish conniving cock, and Keeley says it does return a certain balance to the universe, it's the doesn't balance it? Balance to the universe. That is that's so good. She tells. She suddenly stops and goes. Promise me you won't work for him. Like she's suddenly worried. She's like, he can't afford me. It's a Keely, great line. Not Keely showing her worth. Yeah. As well, there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Richmond's my football club. She says. Rebecca gives her some advice for being a boss. Hire your best friend, and they both go. Yeah. Oh. Keely's like, fuck you, because she's crying again. It's great. It's, it's a really beautiful scene. It, yeah. It's and again, I was crying at this point as well. Yeah. yeah it's. Really good stuff. So we're on to game day, kids. Can you believe we've already gotten here? Shut up. We hear Don't Bring Me Down by Electric Light Orchestra. Continues to be a great song. It yeah. plays as everyone prepares for the big game. Plug to, pl fun to play on bass as well, Joe, if you Ooh. haven't played it. Crazy fun to play. Oh, and well. uh, yeah, uh, they, so it's playing as the guys, uh, Baz, Jeremy, and Paul are in the pub. They do a nice little time lapse. They're, they're, they're in the same place. And everybody else is moving around them, but you can tell this is the only life they have. This so they're it. like, uh, "This is it." I will point out during that time lapse, one very, very cloudy pint gets put on that bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just there's this, and a bit later on with a woman in a yellow dress who clearly wasn't given the brief for the scene because she just stands there while everyone else is going mental, and she's just stood there. <laughs> oh, who's the woman in the yellow dress there? Jane. I'm just saying. Let's say it's Jane. Let's say it's Jane. Let's say it's Jane. It's fine. <laughs> Roy's going through the locker room, uh, bumping fists, and then he gets to Jamie. But Jamie's ready. Right. But this would old Roy have ever gone through and no chance. And like and like G'd everyone up. No, no, he wouldn't. No, no. He'd he, be he sat would... in a room of darkness. Like, he would have been he? sat as stewing. Yeah, just angry, leading by leading by fear, not like by motivation, not yeah. by motivation. That's that's, that's oh, why mate, that's such a great coach. Lead by motivation, not by fear. That is, yeah. Got that from Ted for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, he and, goes to Jamie yeah. and he, he, he looks at him and just walks past and Jamie just kind of goes, yeah, I'll just fist bump myself. Then. <laughs> when we see Nate in Ted's office staring at the pyramid on the wall. He's got his black suit on. He does have the black suit. And you've seen, you guys have seen the... Uh, the YouTube Pyramid thumbnail of... for this here video, it's Nate looking up. So that's where we got that pick. So, yeah, it's so one thing I did notice about this scene. So, like, obviously, Nate's like got his back to beard and he's staring. The, the way Roy's walking over to Nate, it's as if he's like just found out. Yes. About, yeah. Not ab not about Keely, about Nate being the anonymous source because he's walking yes. like he's going to fucking murder Nate. I think and I that too. how Roy walks though. Like but the, I was like, is he he's yeah. heading he's heading over to Nate with like purposes? What yeah. I mean, he, he what was, I mean, like, yeah. And, and obviously then um, like Ted comes in and it kind of like it it sort of like neutralizes the situation, but it was just just interesting that like obviously Roy like would Roy have figured that out? Would Beard have told him? Excellent. I don't Jay. think Roy cares. To be honest, no, I think Roy 100 percent cares because Roy cares about Ted. No, 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 but he's, he's when, he, he cares about Ted, but I don't think he's that bothered about when the where um, came from. when the team were like saying they were gonna kill him. Roy was like with them, like yeah, let's oh, kill him. Yeah, but it's it's Roy <laughs> going to go and beat someone up, isn't it? He's 100 percent no, bored. Right. Lord of the yeah. Flies, isn't it? Like, <laughs> and Jay, to your point about him stopping when Ted comes in, Captain's on deck. When the coach comes, all in. right, Catherine, right? Calm down. So, I'm just saying. So maybe at that point, to your point, Jay, he's like, "All right, Ted's here. I'll stop." Yeah, yeah. If Ted hadn't come in and said, "Oi, turn around," you know, that would have been fun. Things that could have so, been. I know. I just want Nate to get punched hard repeatedly. Uh, it never happens. Yeah, Ted comes in. He's pumped up. He's ready. He says, "You guys ready to run Nate's false nine today?" Nate goes, "Be fools not to." 
Yeah, but he, also gives, man. Look, he also gives him that look of why are you saying he, Nate's false nine? Well, yeah, because he well, that's the thing. Again, he looks surprised that Ted's crediting him at him. Mm. But he's tr- it's like he's doing the mental like gymnastics to then try. And but he's, he's doing the mental have gymnastics. Have a reason to be annoyed about it. Yeah, he's hopping over the wrong horse. Like, like he's, it's... he's got what he wanted that he was complaining about in the previous episode or like the episode mm-hmm. before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now his mind's made. I think. I think at this point, his mind is made up pretty oh, much. His like... head's probably been turned by Rupert already. Let's be honest. Rupert. Oh, and yeah, his yeah. He got him. At the funeral. Yeah. Mm. Um, he got him. But for sure, it's just that look when he goes. It's, it's like because he's, he's like Nate's false nine. It, a, it's good alliteratively. Like it rolls off the tongue, next false time. Like yeah, we'll call mm. it that. We had well, you know, like the upside down toboggan and like the the stealthy palm and all these other like trick names they had. Next false time. It's just easy to remember, isn't it? Like it's, we'll call it that rather than you be here and you be here and you be here. But it's just Nate. He's he's too far gone. You just God, you just took my next sentence. If you didn't know how far gone Nate is, you'll know in this scene because the constant. And you can't see me on audio, but he's oh the eye rolling. This, yeah, every and everything that happens in this scene, he's doing that. I'm like, Oof. it's like when when they do the diamond dogs thing, and Nate's like, yeah, he, he looks genuinely disgusted by them doing he it. Is. And feel it's like he's above. He feels above that. Like but, that. Like the diamond dogs thing was the first time Nate had ever been accepted into anything. And he yes, loves it. Exactly. And now he thinks he's better than that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, remember I told you I was going to say my point of view. It's coming in the next few minutes. Everybody hold on some. So uh, uh, what's, bit, what's funny is Ted sits down. Higgins rolls up outside his window like he's done before. Ted goes, oh, there he is. Did you get kicked out of your office again? He goes, no, no. Temporary relocation while they changed the carpet in there. It was absolutely covered in dog shit. <laughs> covered in dog shit. <laughs> and Ted says, oh, yeah, no, been there, done that. I kind of expected that line to come from Beard, because Beard will <laughs> reference stuff that we never knew from his, you but know, Beard, things he's Beard, done before. Beard, we get a cut of Beard, and he just goes, hmm. right. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, yeah. That's fair. <laughs> Ted asks if anyone has anything they want to talk about before they get out there. Roy speaks up and is stuttering oh. his way through it. He says, I, uh. <clears throat> oh, this this is I, uh, could uh, use some advice. Ted goes, "Are you saying you want to become a diamond dog?" He goes, "Fuck no. no, I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying I wouldn't mind being in the room while it fucking happens." He goes, "Yeah, well, how about a one time visitors pass for our junkyard dog here?" Then they all go, "Oh, woo, woo, woo. and Nate it goes, Nate goes, woof, woof, yeah, he's like, Jesus oh, man, but then also like Ted lies. goes up. Ted goes over to Higgins to try and pull him through the window again. And he's like, I'll just <laughs> yeah. stay here. I'll just stay here this time. <laughs> Good little call back to it. But yeah, Nate's like, oh, I'm I'm better yeah. than this. Fuck Nate, I don't no. need I don't need help from you people, sort of shit. And again, this is where like I was A, he's in his Darth Vader outfit, like he's in his his evil suit. And this this whole scene here at this point is literally where it just drops for him. Yep. It does. Roy mentions the photo shoot and how he hates doing them, but in the end, they didn't use any pics of him and it hurt his feeling. <laughs> Which is a great line. Oh, he's only got one feeling. Yep. <laughs> like and Higgins, feeling. Higgins out of nowhere says, in year five, I was not allowed in the class photo because I developed a rare smile allergy. <laughs> and then Here goes. Goes. That's I really know him, though, is it? <laughs> Where'd that come it's so, from? It's so a smile allergy. It's just such <laughs> Sorry, it's just uh, it's I lovely. I miss Higgins and Higgins just yeah yeah. When he's there, has some tremendous lines. I forget which one you guys said or that we hadn't seen him in a bit, but like it's almost like they knew that and they crammed a bunch of bits in for him in this last episode. Oh, they got my letter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roy says the thing is, she looks so fucking great on her own without me. Without so me. natural. It would have actually been fucking weird if I was in the pictures. And then at Rebecca's dad's funeral, Jamie fucking Tart tells her he's fucking in love with her. Beard says, and he's still alive? He says, yeah. Instead of beating him to death, I fucking forgave him. I'm still fucking furious about it. <laughs> Ted says, That's Roy, not we... forgiving people. If you're still angry, you've not yeah. forgiven them. 
That's fair. I actually missed that Eric, bit the first as, time. As we've just established, Roy only has one feeling. So That's it. it takes a while for it all to come through that very narrow processing system. Well, here we go, kids. Nate says, there's something I have to confess as well. Beard and Ted look at each other like, here it comes. Thank goodness. It's about time. And then he confesses that he kissed Keely. And I'm going to get to you, Jay, because I'm going to. Yeah, we're circling around here. But Roy says, she told me about it. It's okay. I kissed I kissed your girlfriend. We're good. All Jamie did was talk to her and you wanted to kill him. Don't you at least want to headbutt me or something? You made a mistake, Nate. Don't worry about it. No, no, I deserve to be headbutted. Coach Beard says, I'd be happy to headbutt you, Nate. Oh, Real straight. In such a deadpan. I would. Yeah. And Beard, Jay, I don't imagine yeah. Beard is a violent man. Like, no, but he did Beard's night out. But the betrayal well, of his friend by someone who he thought was in his inner circle. Yeah. Yeah. And he was also outnumbered in that alley. Let's don't forget that. Had he not been oh, outnumbered. I... Oh, Beard's handy. Like, Beard's got a shady past. Lumberjack tournament. Like, he knows loads of stuff. Yeah, Beard's that guy in a one on one fight. He'll pick up sand off the ground to throw it in your eyes so he can what punch it. You know no, what I mean? Got, he's got sand in his pocket. He's got pocket sand. Yeah, he's definitely got pocket <laughs> Dale sand. Dale Gribble. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Jay, we're circling back to this because this is what we've been alluding to all episode. I See, tell me if you read it this way. The, the disgust level with Nate is to the point of he's insulted that Roy's not mad at him because it means that Nate's not a threat to him. Nate's nobody. Is that how yeah, you read no. this? Yeah, 100%. Um, Nate, it, it's weird. So like, I think Nate trying to get Roy to basically – basically, he, he's – trying to like goad Roy into beating him up and he, I think he wants that as like pe- almost like penance for like what he's doing like it's oh shit it's it's, yeah. it's like it's like he doesn't he doesn't want to own up to the really fucking bad thing he did so he's mm. going to own up to the still bad thing but not as bad as this thing he's done to try and like at least get a bit of like sort of comeuppance because he, fe- he clearly he doesn't like the person he's becoming Mm. But oh, then when Roy is like indifferent to him, and I think the reason, obviously, like the reason Roy gets more like pissed off about Jamie doing stuff is because him and Jamie just don't like each other anyway. Mm. So it's yeah, but it's also like, like Jamie is a, like Jamie and Keely have a history as well. Yeah, right. Like, but also, like Roy's never had an issue with Nate. So that's why he's, no, like, he's been his biggest proponent. He's been his yeah. biggest fan. Yeah, he's... that's why he's like, look, Nate, you made a mistake. I, I forgive you. We're good. Yeah. I, it, it's Roy, Roy literally. I imagine Keely being Keely, she gets kissed a lot. Like mm. in in weird, yeah. awkward situations. I agree. Yeah. Well, in some, like as we said in that episode, like she's just naturally sort of I don't say flirtatious, but like just just yeah, just who she is, and people well, can misread those signs the wrong way. Everybody, I'd, I'd say, I'd say most guys maybe at some point have have looked at the the girl they really really are into from a distance, but have stopped because they're like, I'm into her, but man, she's flirty. In other words, if we end up together, she goes, is she still going to be that way? Not that she would do anything, but it's like, man, she's flirty. Do you yeah, know what I mean? I Keely's not. It's just Keely's nature. I think just exactly. Of, of, exactly. Of, of who she is and what she has gone through. Yeah. She's learned how to, I don't want to say manipulate people, but like just how to, to, to rub alongside them in the yep. easiest possible way. And because, as we've already established, Nate has never had any kind of love shown to him, True. it would appear like, you know, hugging that metal bear full of electric. Um, is is any 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 sign of emotion to him is is, is thinking, but yeah, with the the Roy thing when Roy goes, we're good and walks off, mm. and Nate f- is fuming because mm. yeah. he. Well, why are you not angry at me, Roy? I kissed yeah. your girlfriend. That's way worse than what Jamie Tart did. Yeah, that's be little. It's be it belittles me by you not considering me a threat. By you considering yeah. me not a threat means yeah, I'm go. less than. That's it. Yeah. He's got a massive inferiority complex, hasn't he? Oh, oh dude. totally. Yeah. Everyone you know else what? is wearing Richmond tops and stuff. 
on the line later on, and he's got his fucking suit on. If Nick Muhammad were 6'3", it's not the same character. But the fact that Nick is not a tall man helps so much here. Because it's, <laughs> it's, no, right? it's Napoleon yeah. complex where he's... I, I, yeah. I also did notice as well, I didn't pick it up until this episode, and I thought, has has has, has Nate's hair got grayer? Yeah. Yeah, throughout the series. Yeah, it has. Right, I thought so he, as much. He, and the, in the first episode of season one, he, his hair is like completely black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, like he, when he's, um, when he like starts, like basically he, he like fills in the the decline. Tent, he does, Yeah. It, it, like his hair starts, like he gets like, starts like right. getting gray in temples. And then by like the I, end, it's completely gray. I didn't know whether it was in like a, just, okay, it's an acting thing. Although, oh. although Nick, they Nick Muhammad's hair did, did just, genuinely just go gray anyway so it, it could just be wow like, that's some serendipity i think it? they yeah. i think they let it happen to signal the change in the character but they never <sighs> called it out on the show well isn't that lovely that's some nice yeah wonderful so roy goes wait so sometimes the fucking diamond dogs are just <laughs> chatting about shit no one has to fucking solve <laughs> nothing anything and nothing resolved. fucking changes <laughs> Ted, Ted goes, his coat and goes yeah. huh? <laughs> And by the way, that's a callback. To remember when Ted, Ted was in the restaurant with Rebecca and her mom and Keely, I think, or with Nora, or I forget who she was. They were talking. He goes, wait a minute. So sometimes when women talk, nothing gets resolved and nothing gets fixed. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, love it, love it. Beard whispers. We're so different. No, we're not. So so Roy walks out. Beard goes, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And Ted's like, <laughs> they spit as well. They're like, oh, they're proper freaking out that Roy is like. Oh, it's, they're oh. both such little girls when it comes to this stuff. Just, they're so oh man, you've got Roy, like you've got Roy, like yeah. so deep in your web now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two little girls want you to play at their tea party. That's what Beard and Ted are. I'm telling you. <laughs> so we go to the game down the pitch. Brentford is up one zero. As Chris and Arlo are calling out the false nine formation as being a bad idea. Brentford goes up two zero, two nil. Excuse me. And Nate is yelling from the sidelines, cursing Fucking. from the Jay. At that point, again, not real people, not a real game. At that point, does the head coach get tap him on the shoulder and say, "He's up"? I mean, does it um, just depend on the situation? I think it just depends on the situation. I think like you, you tend to find a lot of um, a lot of coaching teams will have like people who kind of like oversee various different things tactically. So. Because mm. because it's Nate's formation that he, that trial and that's why he'll probably be a lot more vocal than the others. But I think it, what it's... happens um, for that bit is they're making an attack. Someone gets tackled, and then they've got now in defence because they've all pressed forward. So Nate's point is mm. kind of valid, but he doesn't need to do swears at people. Mm. Yeah, um, it, it's it's one of those things as well. Like with the like they mention it on the comment on the commentary, you you do not like try a new tactic like I th- in, in a game as like critical as this like obviously they needed something to kind of to to fix what was going wrong and like ensure victory but it's it's a very ballsy move they've like which again mm-hmm. it, it it highlights ted's fate in the, like faith in nate because the fact that he's literally Talking doing yes like taking this massive gamble on on nate on Nate's, Nate's like system, Nate's tactic, something that Nate suggested, which any other manager probably wouldn't do that. They'd be like, no, nah, I'm going to stick with what works, and this has been working. But you see, right? Anyone else, anyone else normal would have been like, oh, man, he's got faith in me. He believes in my idea. Nate sees it as, well, when this goes wrong, he's going to blame me for it. Mm. Well, that's the thing as well. Obviously, the 2 nil down, it isn't working because... But Ted's Ted's like philosophy about that at half time as well, where he says like, I they they've just had forty five minutes to figure out what to, not to do in this situation. Now they know what That's to do. That's it. What not, it, they know what to, what not to do? Yeah. And like again, it it goes it goes back to like with with um when with Nate's reaction to that as well as like, oh well, the players are just too shit to play. And it's like mm. it's like a workman doesn't blame his tools. Right. Like they've 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 literally like anyone can play that formation, but they've been working on it for a couple of days. 
at this yeah. point. Yeah. Like, it's I, an I, unusual again, formation with them to play because yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really a, it's one of those formations that if it works, it's an absolute nightmare to play against. But mm. it, it takes a lot of time. Like you've got to have the right set of players playing it. It takes a lot of time to kind of adjust to that style because it's essentially taking one kind of like avenue of attacking out of the game completely and relying on a different like relying on more players who might not be as used to attacking to attack I think more. The commentator saying it is like you you sit in defense, you sit in midfield mm. and you wait for the the yeah. opportunities. Yeah. It, it's all it's all about it's all about soaking up pressure and then because obviously you've got like norm in a normal like formation you'd have like one or two strikers and then between like three and five midfielders on the pitch. Mm. You you've got to kind of like you've you've essentially you're moving the strikers back into the midfield so you've got more people attacking at the same time but they've got to mm. they've got to soak up that pressure. Yeah. Interesting. At halftime Ted tells him it's bleak. So I'm not going to not going to you know sugarcoat it whatever it's bleak. Join the Untitled Wrestling podcast for all the latest pro wrestling news from around the world. Want to dive deeper? Interviews, fantasy booking, roundtable discussions, quizzes, video game streaming, watch-alongs, and a lot more can all be found on YouTube and wherever podcasts are available. You can also find the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Untitled Wrestling Podcast, and Twitter, Twitch, and Discord at Untitled Rest Pod. Follow, subscribe, and download today. And then we get a weird, weird reference when he says... He, re- he looks at the team and says, look at them, like a Renaissance painting portraying it's masculine so, melancholy. Again, like, I They're know all posed. Ted does physical comedy really well, but that <laughs> shot is tremendous. It's when, awesome. I'm, all I'm, just being like, uh. when, when <laughs> you know what this is a reference to? Well. As well. <laughs> oh, it's a reference to any oh, sort great. of um, Renaissance painting well, of just, yeah. like, posed season, drama. Season one, episode two in Biscuits, the episode Biscuits, Ted called Isaac. He he said, "Looks like a Rodin sculpture in cleats." They yeah. went all the way back to that. Like, yeah. I completely forgot but that reference. Again, I when I, I rewatching this just before we recorded, I I laughed so hard at just that shot of yeah. them all just being melancholy in a room, and it. Oh, it, it as I say, yeah. when it because it because it's just silence as well. Yeah, I went just like drop the water like, bottle, like, and then yeah. panics and just like goes back to being sad. <laughs> it's great. That's uh, so Nate cool. wants to abandon the false nine. He said it would work if we had players who knew what the fuck they were doing. Fuck they were doing. Did you catch Beard and Roy stare at each other when this was said? Yep, 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 yep. Ted disagrees. He wants he wants to stick with Nate's plan. At this point, if you're Tate, move on. Or Ted, move on. He doesn't. But he's a uh, Roy tells him, he says, go ask the Roy. players. They're the ones who are actually Roy. doing the shit. That's it. He says, Roy. Perfect. They're the ones that are outside running around. But again, like <laughs> this is some, this is something where for Nate's ego, where he's, th- this is that, this is where this whole complex comes to. He's obviously. once again having his, his, yeah. his confidence Nate, stripped away from him. Nate doesn't like that Roy came to the club and now, now, now Roy's like the best coach. And it's not Nate. So, like when when uh, when Nate has obviously suggested this tactic, and he's like, "We just need to abandon it, abandon it." And Roy turns around and says, "Why don't you actually ask the players? Like they're the ones who know." Roy's Roy's offering a solution to the problem of Nate's yeah. of Nate's like um, tactic. So Roy is f- fixing Nate's mess, which is something that he's already done previous times this season, which oh. is why Nate's so like bitter about everything in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, he goes in and and everybody's wrote when they he says, "What do y'all want to do?" They look at each other like, "What just happened?" And of all no, people, I, I I don't I don't know. I'm sure Jake can inform us, but I don't think like footballers get that option. No, like, I, I would I'm think sure not. that their, their, their coach comes in and just goes, "You're going to do a five four nine four. I don't know sports, but uh, mm. and you're going to do that, and that's what you do, yeah. right?" And for them to go. Do you think this is working? It's the first time anyone has ever gone. Oh shit! I can have an opinion about how I play this game. That's how it felt, Jay, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't happen often if it did. I, I, I imagine. Obviously, like there's been time because you, you hear about it a lot of times where like 
a manager but just before they like get sacked there's lost the dressing room and you can tell because the players aren't playing like for the manager they they look disinterested and a lot of the time it's because the manager will have said well this is the way we're doing it and if you don't like it tough so, so I, a, I imagine a, it's another balancing act between the yeah I, keeping the I, I, side and yeah I, I imagine that um that obviously again it's because they're trying something new I imagine that football managers probably would ask the players for a bit of input, but they wouldn't like they wouldn't put the ball in the court like Ted's done here. Mm. Again, this is also one of my favourite um, bits of just laying up stuff from this season. Jan Mass stands up and goes, "Like, yeah, we can do this. The, mm. the, the, the system is fine." And then, like Ted goes. Would Jan Mass lie to you? And then he goes, he goes like, yeah, but also, um, Zorro, you should have saved that first goal. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, even even in a moment of poignancy, he can't help but be a little bit of a dick, can he? Like, it's. Oh. Well, you remember the the um, what was the line about uh, about Jan that that um, well, the Dutch are always honest. Wasn't that the line? Yeah, that they're always yeah. yeah. He's still so very honest. direct. At every point when Jan Mas has had the opportunity to say something like comforting or he, he's always just like said the actual facts of it. And I think I think that, that makes this bit is that everyone knows Jan Mas is like if he believes in it, then by God we should believe in it as well. Have they been sowing the seeds all season and a half with Jan yeah, Mas? I believe I believe as soon as Jan Mas was introduced and he it was never for spoke this. a falsehood. It was literally for Wonderful. this one bit because he cuts around, he cuts around everyone, and as soon as Jan Mas goes, no, the system is fine. We just need to, to like, yeah, uh, everyone he cuts to a lot of people, and they're all like, if Jan Mas believes, then I can believe. Like it's it's a very good little thing. And and Jay, if you notice, they go in for the hands in, and Nate just does this, <sighs> yeah, and puts his hand in like. Hate it, hate it. But instead of going in, Isaac pushes no, through man. them, Ted, and Ted he goes up Captain, to the sign. You yep, putting your hand in. And McAdoo sat there. Ah, and kids, if Ted you're watching the, the video, it's this moment. Yeah, it's this moment, see. and this is the yeah. moment that again made me cry. Yeah, because McAdoo just walks through them, like brushes them aside, walks up and puts his hand on the believe sign that's been there since episode one. Like, yep. And this 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 dumb joke that he put up, like it's not even like, like it, it's badly painted, like it's not even like centered in the picture or anything. It's it, that you just have to believe. We know we're good. Mm. We know we're good. We just have to play like we know we can play. And McAdoo puts his hand on it, and everyone kind of oh shit, everyone kind of turns and follows him up and it's one of those moments that is like ah, i'm going to stop because i'm going to cry uh, yeah it's, isaac it's, yells um, he yells richmond on three yeah it, it, it's uh, it's isaac as well like kind of really coming into that sort of like leadership role of the captain like they, for me this is where they've kind of like cement that like everyone follows isaac yeah hmm but also, yeah. they're hundred percent on for Ted as well, for sure. There's a there's a bit as well, like in this scene where um, where like when Ted again calls it Nate's false nine, and Nate looks like genuinely shocked that Ted's like credited the, him with it in front of the players. Fair, yeah. And then instantly, as soon as like Isaac touches the sign, Nate looks disgusted by the whole like. Ted and Beard look and Roy all look proud. Nate looks reviled by it. He does. Fucking ridiculous. I, you know. Well, look, the the scene that we've I personally been dreading all season yeah. is here. Everyone goes out to head back out to the game, and Ted at this point has had enough. He's watched the facials, he's heard the little snide comments. He knows what Nate did to him, not just to him and the club as well, put the club in a bad spot going into this game. And he says, hey, Nate, everything okay? He goes, yes, yes, Ted, everything is okay. Oh, man. At this See, point, I'm like, fuck you, man. Down. 
Like, I wrote yeah. all of this down because it's one I of did those too. things that cuts like, me to my core. You don't have a job without Ted. You don't have a coaching job without Ted. You would this still thing, be getting beasted by Jamie. Yes. This thing where you right. earned it. Did you earn a coaching job or did Ted give you a chance? I, yeah. I, Ted, Ted saw something in you. Yeah. He saw what you could be. He saw the potential. He saw the, the germination of that seed. Yeah. And because what? Because he didn't keep heaping praise on you. That's exactly. That's the reason to turn, turn bitch. Nah. You can see Ted. You only see frustration with Ted this much through the whole series of Ted Lasso. Oh, this he goes, bit. Uh, yeah. Oh, come on, man. You're mad as hell at me. I just want to know why. You could tell he's ready to snap. I mean, that's, you know, what have I got to learn here? You want to know what you did? And then it starts. Who's got it? You got it? Okay. I'll tell you what you did. You made me feel like I was the most important person in the whole world. And then you abandoned me. Like you switched out a light just like that. And I worked my ass off. He says ass. And a British person would say ass. Ooh. Trying to get your attention back to prove myself to you. To make you like me again. But the more I did, the less you cared. It was like I was fucking invisible. You haven't even got the photo I gave you at Christmas up in your office. Just a picture of dumb Americans. Now you're going to play Nate's false nine. So when the team fuck up, which they will, you can blame it on me. Well, no, fuck that. Everybody loves you. The great Ted Lasso. Well, I think you're a fucking joke. Without me, you wouldn't have won a single match. And they would have shipped your ass back to Kansas where you fucking belong. With your son. That, because you sure as hell don't belong here, but I do. I belong here. This didn't just fall into my lap, all right? I earned this. And then Ted says to him, he says, well, you know, Nate, if I didn't show you as much uh, appreciation as I should have done, I'm, I'm sorry about that. And he goes, no, 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 you know what? You're full of shit. Fuck you, Ted. And walks hmm. past him, right? And this, this, this... This scene, he's just like, Nate, fucking Nate. And yeah. two things coming out of this. One, as we all know, in No Weddings in a Funeral, the picture's on Ted's dresser in his bedroom, in yeah. his flat. Yes. Yeah. A, point one. B, don't go for a man, son. That's a coward's maneuver. That's it. As men, Jay, honestly, as men, I'll, I'll, real quick, like, when you bring my son's name into it, tread lightly. I'm, again, I'm not. I don't fight at anybody. Who am I? Freaking uh, mate, again, Brock Lesnar. If I had but children, like, they came for them. Yeah, I would smash. Their mention faces. my son's name more than one time. It might start getting a little hairy in here. Go ahead, Jay. I, I was gonna say like that. Te- literally, like Ted having that. Like Nate doesn't obviously doesn't know Ted has that like picture in his flat, but Ted's literally got it like near and dear to his heart because yeah, yeah it's on like a bedside it table, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's with it's with pictures of like his his family, family. and stuff like that. Yeah, and that, that's that's where like again it's it's like this delusion Nate's got that Ted's like wronged him in some way, and for what? Just because Roy's coming as the coach and he's helped he's helped oh, the team because we're not all having a let's praise fucking Nate parade every other Tuesday, like mm. <sighs> mate, man, it, 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 it's just a book. Everything he says here is wrong. I I think that what like him doing what he's done as well. He's, it's it almost feels as if he's trying to like trigger Ted to have a panic attack so he can then take the wheel and like get the glory when the team like win. That was wonderful. Wow. Well, I mean, it. I wouldn't put it past them at this point. No. Yeah. He knows and, his uh, weakness. Yeah. He, he's literally. Yeah. He's everything he's saying in that speech is stuff to push Ted's buttons. It was the bit where he went, and your son. And I was like, yeah. mate, I will yeah. fucking kill you. Yeah, that's enough. Call me the high heavens. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, it's an addition to the, the thing as well. You should be back there uh, where you belong. Full stop with yeah. your son. Yeah. It I, makes it weird. Even if you didn't mean it that way, you still, you're making no, it weird. Meant, stop. He oh, yeah. He meant, oh, he for knew sure. What he was doing. Yeah. I've held this for an hour and a half. Go on. Here we go. I don't like this. I don't get it. I'm not a fan. I love the show. Nick Muhammad is wonderful. 
it, the performance here is spot on. It's it's top notch. I hate this. I, everything, not to spoil season three, but everything's going to be okay, kids. But like, and I know that during and after and now, hate this. I for me, maybe other people are are and they see the can I see the connections. I see what we've done for. 24 episodes now, 22 episodes. I get it. I know. I hate it. I, I, it doesn't reconcile with me. I don't know. Again, right. Star Wars, when, when, we, when Luke gets to that, to the temple with those kids, I was out. I'm, uh, you're forcing it on me. Now you're telling me he has to be Vader. We got to get him there. This to me, I'm, I'm out. I, I don't still love the show. Still a big fan. I didn't go on chat rooms or social media and blast this episode. I won't do it now. Hate this. I don't get it. It's weird to 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 hate it so much, but along. still love it. Uh, you're right. You're right. I I totally see. I see it. I didn't feel any of it. I didn't feel any of his side through through other duos in this show. I could kind of see Jamie's side. I could kind of see Roy. You know, I can't see anything. Do you not, do you not see it? how that like he Nate has just misread the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that I get such an inferiority complex. That I get. Yeah. That I get. I just don't know how it leads a guy who's never spoke up for himself to have the balls to because speak up to everyone. From Rebecca, that's spitting on the mirrors. All of that's that fair. Uh, I still hate I, it. I was, I was gonna say, I hate that, it as well. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I hated watching the scene because it's yeah. hard to watch. It um, is. Isn't that the, isn't that kind of the point though? Because like literally, as we was as we were saying, like. Nate's constantly moving the goalposts for himself, with, for himself to to almost to give himself reasons to be bitter. Yeah, to your point about Rebecca, they've helped create a monster here by giving him confidence, mm -hmm. haven't they? Yeah. So it's Ted. Ted. Ted gave him. Ted gave him the opportunity in the first place, and like a combination of the two, has yeah, helped a, 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 a Godzilla amongst them. Yeah. Like the the thing the the problem Ted had with it was he's a, he allowed Nate to make his own mistakes and mm. learn from them. How do you learn if you're not from a mistake? Nate didn't learn from them. He, no, he just, Nate saw he that just as got... Ted letting him down. Yeah, Nate uh, Ted should have protected Nate from making that mistake, but that's not how you learn. Like, mm. can you lay some of this at Ted's door a bit? In as much as to your point. He allows you to make your own mistakes. But when Nate F's up at times, if Ted had pulled him aside in the closet, away from everyone else, not to embarrass him, to say, Nate, just real quick, here's what I saw out there. I know your intention was good, but here's what I would do next time. We don't really see or hear that. You see, I mean, but to be fair, in season two, Ted's dealing with a lot of stuff on his own. That's true. Like, and that's it's true. Not his job to protect Nate. Well, it's like, not his job to help a grown man be a grown man for sure. No, yeah, hundred um, percent. And I, th I think it is. I, 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 for the first time ever, I will disagree with you, Tom. I think this has been perfectly done because Nate, like again, like Ted did heap praise on him at the start, and they gave him the coaching he did. job and stuff. And then, but then, like that's your job. You get on with it. I don't expect every day when I go to work to someone to come in and give me a balloon because I'm just doing no. my fucking job. Like you, you know, know what I mean. If but if it's Nate wants that because he feels like he's somehow special. Yeah. Well, it goes back to Nate's like daddy issues, doesn't it? His dad doesn't yes. give him any recognition for anything. Um, so when Ted's giving him recognition and that stops because he's just doing his his job. Yeah. And yeah. shouldn't be getting a pat on the back for every little fucking thing every he does. Little thing. He, yeah, like let's you face know, it, the false the false nine works. Ted's gonna be the first person to say, Great job, Nate. Yes. Oh, yeah. he does. But he was, and he does. literally goes, do we continue with Nate's false nine? Because like all the way through mm. it, he's said, this is Nate's idea, right? And he's come in with it. And he's like, this yeah. will work. Like Nate was so confident. And yet when Nate, when it starts going south, he's like, it's the fucking player's fault. Bad workman tools again. Mm. Yeah. And it's from, you know what I need, what I may be needed in this speech, which by the way, Muhammad crushed. Oh, but what I may be oh, yeah. needed in this speech was just one line that you let Roy just walk back in here. I don't. I mean, think, what? I don't what know am I? You're so hung up on Roy. No, I'm not. Hold on. But it, for me, for Nate, it's like 
I, you just let Roy I, walk back on in here. Then you forgot I existed. If I'd had maybe that, I would have been like, okay, now it's starting okay, to. Okay, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? For me, again, I don't, you, I don't think. I don't think Roy's the issue with it. No, no, he's I, not. But it's it's Ted. Ted. Ted loved me, but when more people come in, what about me? I, I thought you loved me. I think Roy's part of the issue for Nate because it's yes. as I say, it's like as soon as Roy comes back as a coach, and obviously Ted had been trying to get Roy to come as a coach like since he left the club. And as soon as Roy comes back, like it 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 is like it awakens something in Nate where he's just like extremely bitter towards the fact that Roy's come in and making all these positive changes in the club. How how yeah, how how, how that, can a person who has played football all his life have more ideas than me, hmm. Nate? Yeah, yeah. Who that, was a that's, fucking pot wash. Yeah. That that's the thing. No, it's like it's it's gone from Nate's the person who's like become like Ted's most like sort of reliable like member of the coaching team as far as like helping the team win to Roy coming in and helping Isaac become the leader that he needed to be and helping Jamie become the professional he needed to be and mentoring the players from as, someone who's actually done it. As we said in the last episode, trees share sunlight. Yeah. Mm. Well, Here's what I'll say to to wrap this bit up, but like as we get as we get into season three, things may start connect to connect for me a little bit more. But like just raw emotion coming out of this, I'm like I'm just not. They did a master I, to your guys' point. They did a masterful job laying it out. You guys are hundred percent right. For me in my head, logically speaking, I'm like ah. But there again, I fine. may get there. I may get there. It's fine. Hope, again, yeah, it's that good a show where take what you want from it. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Well, when they go back to the pitch, by the way, my only note here was when this first happened, I was stunned. This time I was pissed off because I was. We get back to the pitch and Arlo and Chris are talking and Arlo says, is time running out of Richmond's chances to control their future? Chris says, only, only if you, you believe think of time is, is a linear construct. And I was like, What's, are we having a metaphysical debate at this time? Arlo says, yes, Chris, I do. Which is nice. Nate is sitting down. Nate's sitting down like almost the whole time. Completely oh, he's, detached. But he's, he's also isolated himself from everyone else as well. Yes. Scan, Sam scores. He doesn't care at all. Doesn't care at all. Chris no, Holler impressed. Also, everyone else is going mental. Like some guys like punching him in the head. Like they're all going yep. mad for it. Like he says, Chris Holler says if they get a draw, they move up to the Premier League. Jamie gets the ball and is taken down. It's a penalty. And it's his time to take the kick and shine. But instead, oh. <laughs> right. instead, what? football is life. <laughs> it gives the ball to Danny Rojas. Danny Rojas. I'm, I'm, I'm about to pour some cold water on this for you, lads. I'm sorry. I don't oh, know. Do oh, crap. Game. Don't do this, Jay. <laughs> it's it's not a penalty. I think it's it not. is. Last line of defense, surely. J Jamie's offside. Oh, he is massively he offside. He is yeah. offside. It, it is a massive it, long ball it, up it, to it's, someone. It's, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't have been a penalty. It would have been yeah. a free kick to the other team. Yeah, um, it would have been. Because when I watched James like, miles he's offside. Way offside. Yeah. yeah. How'd they he, miss that? Like, How'd they miss that? He's, he's like a country mile offside. I, I mean, yeah. they, they can obvious they could obviously try and like they they could have they could have quite easily <laughs> disguised this by <laughs> by just not including Jamie in the shot when Yamas played the ball, but because they include mm. Jamie in the shot, and you can see Jamie so far upside, it's like, well, that's, uh, that's a little bit of uh, yikes. I mean, to be fair, the, the, there isn't like any VAR or anything like that in, at that point in the game anyway, so mm. there wouldn't have been... But he's not even like a bit offside. He's Yeah, like... like Linesmen make mistakes with that, and every now and again, like stuff like that would come through, like go through the cr cracks and be like, How the hell is that a goal? It's offside. But yeah. in this situation, especially where there's been a stoppage due to a penalty, like it, 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 it wouldn't have been a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, guys. <laughs> again, it's, just, it's a TV show, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we get a penalty. He gives it to Danny Rojas, who uh, the announcement team say hasn't hit a penalty since, well, yeah. Yeah, episode one of season two. Mm. Apparently. See, is it? 
the, yeah. Se- yeah, the season starts oh, with Danny taking st- a penalty and ends yes. with Danny taking yeah. a penalty. Killing the oh, dog. Oh, lovely. Serendipity. Yep. Oh. And uh, what's good is that he's taking a deep breath. Did you guys see the old man with the new little mascot with a little helmet on its head? He's got a little helmet on! I was adorable. Yeah. I love as well <laughs> that he's got believe, R.I.P. Earl on his head. He's got R.I.P. Earl on his boot. But also, I believe that was um, Tina Feyhound. It was Tina Feyhound. Yeah. Wonderful. Who won Pup Idol. So that's like Higgins' days. He may have got a shitty carpet out of it, but we found it. We found a mascot. He, uh, Danny takes the kick, and it's good. And Nate. All his life. It's that bit, though. Like, Danny's got, got Jamie has realized that it doesn't matter if we win or lose. It's about brotherhood. It's about teamship. And he gives it to Danny. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, we get the. And he looks across. It's that look where he looks across, and we just see the tiny greyhound in the little fucking crash helmet, and he's just like, "Football is life." Nate doesn't care at all that this happened. He still doesn't no, care. He's he's still angry because it's not using his formation. They've won on a penalty. Like, yeah. Well, again, yeah. to your point about Jamie giving up the ball again, I'll tell you as we've said for many episodes now, Michael Jordan didn't start winning rings till he started passing the ball. You involve your teammates, and they will help. You can help make them better, and they will help you in the end. You know why it's I mean, called a team and not a me? Thank you. Go ahead, also, Jeff. all through this match as well, um, your man from Thingy is in the box with Rebecca as well. Sam Richardson. Oh, yeah. Edwin Nakufu. Edwin Nakufu right. is there um, as well. Yeah, it, it, shows, it shows how much Jamie's grown as well, given like the glory again. It's the same as in the last series where he passes the ball to like to basically relegate Richmond. He's yeah. passing the ball to Daddy to get them promoted. Mm. Yeah. Synergy. Yeah. yeah. Arlo says with that goal, they'll finish in second place and will return to the Premier League in their very first attempt. Fans are chanting, We are going up. Roy headbutts a surprise Jamie for coming on to Keeley and then hugs him. <laughs> Why you know, do that for? So I do this, and then hugs him. So hard. we we've talked about the similarities between this show and Major League. This is also a scene in Major League. Oh when yeah, Cleveland yeah, it is. wins the game, and Corbin Burton gets punched, or he punches Charlie Sheen, and then Sheen gets back up and he hugs him, and they're celebrating the win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there you go. Um, and if you look, by the good. way, even the look on Phil Dunster's face is similar to Charlie Sheen. So I think they planned this out for sure. Not having seen Major League since I had to do my GED um, with Kimmy Schmidt. (laughs) There's references. Come on. Um, That's a reference. I got it. I totally got it. I just thought it was a fun bit. He's like, like, even though Roy has forgiven him, he still has to just hurt Jamie a bit before he can fully, like... Of course. It's it's Roy's one emotion. Like... (laughs) It's the the fact that Jamie understands that as well, though. Yeah, yeah. He's like, okay, yeah, bro. Yeah. He's like, yeah, that That's makes right. sense. I had to say it, but um, but well, they, as well, yeah. When when so Nate stands up when Danny takes the penalty, and then when they score, Roy hugs him, and Nate looks horrified by this. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, dude. He storms off, doesn't he? Just walk away. He storms he, off he, and heads back he, to the he locker. Storms off when the final whistle when the final in whistle a, goes. In a very similar picks. way to Ted's panic attack. Storm yeah. off. Like his hands are in the same and, place and everything. And to something that happens in season three as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. They go into the locker room and uh and the guys are celebrating. Ted walks in and the belief sign has been ripped in half. On his and, desk. Yep. It's reported, by the way, this was a, a little fun fact. Nick Muhammad apparently dropped to the floor and screamed when he was told how Nate's final act as AFC Richmond would be to rip up the team's belief sign. So even oh, Nick wow. had a, it really hit him hard. Like, I can't, I can't do this. It's too much. So yeah, crazy. It's, it's, it's again, um, not just using like the, the numbers as talismans things, but talismans are like oddly, like people are just superstitious. It, it's just that weird thing. But it's like, mm-hmm. no, because they come in and he goes to a uh, beer, doesn't he? Ted goes, he's like, oh, should we get a drink? Because Ted's got like a bottle of scotch in his bottom drawer, hasn't he? Like, yeah. He's one of those. Mm-hmm. He's old school manager like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, he, and he sees it and he knows 
A, who has done this, and what's happening. And yeah, you know, you know, it's the symbol his mother as well. And um, nothing, nothing is spoken. But again, um, great face acting. Yeah, crazy. We also get uh, the bit with Edwin Akufu and Sam. This, this is one of the funniest <laughs> things. This feels like an "I think you should leave" sketch. <laughs> it does. Yeah, yeah. It, it really does. <laughs> this you feels like you, Tom. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And <laughs> it, it's a great like comedy actor, and at this point, they must have gone, <laughs> just, just, just do some Sam Richardson stuff. It's, okay, then. it's <laughs> like kids acting. It's like a kid acting out. Well, like it also, is Sam's face? All the yeah. where he's like, oh, okay, <laughs> like I was just like okay. looking at him, really confused. I, I love that. I love the Higgins as well. Is like stood in the window of <laughs> the door, and he keeps looking oh. at Sam. And Sam looking at Higgins. <laughs> I mean, kids, Tam, Sam's told him no. And he's so, this guy yeah, just um, knew Sam all, was coming. They're all celebrating in the thing. Oof. And Higgins comes in and he goes, oh, uh, Sam, can I just borrow you for a second? And mm. he puts him in a room with Edwin and that guy who is like, his, the guy he's shaking hands with Francis a skeleton. The shaker. Yeah. He's shaking hands with a the skeleton. They're like, I've got one job and I'll do it with anything in the room. <laughs> Oh, um, but yeah, he Sam, Sam, Sam refuses. He says, "I, I don't think very politely." I, but, oh, in Sam politeness. Yep. I, I don't think my journey here is uh, Richmond is done. So uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for the offer, but yeah. And then, like Edwin, like he just turns and he goes, "You piece of shit!" Yeah, he's going nuts. Uh, but he, he gets really like specific. Yeah, well, I will yeah, buy your house and I will do a shit in every room of your childhood house and then I will burn it down and eat cake and shit on the ashes. It's brilliant. <laughs> I oh, promise God. you this. He calls Sam a medium talent, which, by the way, may have been a callback to Saturday Night Live in 78 when Bill Murray called Chevy Chase a medium talent as an insult. Chevy Chase is a medium talent. Chevy Chase is a, yeah. a subpar talent who has got by... I don't, that's a story for another day. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure about Jerry Chase. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. I, I love the way he left community. From, uh, he, just, he just killed him off off screen. Because him he, off he, he's, he, he's a C word, yeah. Because he's a dedicate, but this, old man. Uh, this, I will this dedicate my life to though. destroying you, you fucking asshole. Yeah, he went nuts. Yeah, but he also gets really weird about the Garland thing as well. Like, And I think that might be like a fun... Not a fun thing, but I imagine after you know, like people in Wales hate the British and the Scottish hate the British and the British hate the British. Well, like, he, it's... He, he, when they like, go to the Nigerian restaurants, yeah, um, in the pre, and he's like, he's like, I don't know how you can eat it that way, but I've had it made this way. But it, you must know that the Ghana- Ghanaian way is much better. It's always there, yeah. But yeah, I will dedicate about... my life to ruining you. You will never play for the national team. Yeah. You and that is Sam's dream. Like, that was Sam's dream. That's always been Sam's dream. But then he stomps off down the corridor and like, throws, a, throws a bin over um, and then like slowly strangles like a, a dummy. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then the way he goes bit, down. <laughs> yeah, he goes down with it. Like, and he's looking yeah. at Sam the whole time as he's doing it. <laughs> and, and then, then he's doing the thing. Yeah. Shits on the thing. He's, yeah. He's showing him like, yeah. Oh my god! So, it's again like I'm glad you've seen the Sam Richardson stuff, and I think you should leave now because again, this is pure manic nonsense. It's yeah, so, good. so good, and the fact that, that like Sam just stands there and goes, <laughs> like, he's la- he's like weirded out by the whole thing, but then Handshake Man um, comes over to shake his hand and gives him one of those. One of those yeah, oh. right. yeah. Oh, it's look, so weird. Um, we're all chuckling. Hey. This is fun. Oh. Kids in season three, not so much fun with this character anymore. <sighs> not all so right. much fun. John, Johnny foreshadowing, yeah. I'm <laughs> saying. I know, right? Yeah. So it's interesting with the Nigerian national team saying he, he'll make sure Sam won't play for him again because I don't think he'd have that level of influence regardless of how he's much very he's rich. Mm. Mm. He can afford but, to leave helicopters all over the that, place. That's, that's <laughs> very true. That's true. Um, I, I mean, it's it's not completely unheard of. Football is a very corrupt sport. but Especially in but, Africa, mate. Well, yeah. Um, hmm. 
but it's it wouldn't it would surprise me if he's got the if he's got the ability to actually do that. But it doesn't so. matter. It's it, it's for the it's for the bit, isn't it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Being but so, it, it's that but, thing where as soon as he says I'm not coming with you, he turns the, and he's like, "You piece of shit." It, it, that's like the biggest like threat he could give to Sam to like ruin oh, his yeah. career. Like because mm. end of the day, Sam's a very proud Nigerian guy. He wants to play right represent Nigeria in the in, yep. like on the international stage, and. Um, he, he probably would have got like, would have walked into getting picked for them as well. Yeah, mm, yeah. Well, which we'll find out later on, maybe. Mm. Maybe. At the press conference after the game, Ted talks about the article written about him, and he looks, and Trent's not there. That'll come back, and yeah. then the line about and about the way we discuss and deal with the topic of mental health and athletics, which again, when he puts it's it one that of those way, really great lines. Yes. Mm. Um, well said. I, I actually thought he was just going to be like, and men in general. Yeah, like, yeah. Because, yeah, it's still used as a weird stigma to beat people over the head with. Well, J- Jason Sudeikis, like, as obviously it's something that he, he does genuinely hold very near and dear to him. Like, he, uh, he when uh, England lost the European Cup final in 2021, was it? Basically, they lost a penalty shootout, and um, th- like the three players who missed penalties uh, were all black guys and got shit tons of racial. Oh, abuse. they did! I remember this now. And, yeah, yeah. And J- Jason Sudeikis wore, uh, went to I think it was at like an award show or something, and he had he was wearing a t shirt which had the name like like the Beatles one where it's like John and Paul and George and Ringo. Yeah, he mm-hmm. did. But it yeah, was uh, he's a he, fucking he, dude. Yeah, he gets yeah, it. He had the shirt with their names on like that. And that was fucking cool. Um mm. yeah. I will it, say it's... that like the whole of Ted Lasso is very much like men should just talk to other men. Mm. Yeah. Or women or anyone. Just just fucking yell about stuff that you're angry about. Well, that look look what happens with Nate where he bottles it up and then he becomes a fucking arsehole. That's fair. Oh shit. But yeah, Nate um but also Ted bottles it up and Ted uses bot- it. But, uses it as, as like a good lightsaber. Yeah. Nate uses it to kill the younglings. Um, <laughs> Jesus. I hate this analogy we've fallen into. <laughs> oh, my. The Star Wars references never end. Um, <laughs> Ted uh, Ted goes to Rebecca's office to congratulate her. She congratulates him. And this is some weird synergy because the last episode of season one ended this way in her office on the couch with him drinking. So uh, still water or sparkling. I thought still water was just water that was just still water, like it hadn't changed. Is <laughs> oh man, it's just such a dumb oh. bit, but it's so great. She tells him that Rupert has bought West Ham, and he says it'll be a nice change having our run-ins with him scheduled as opposed to sneak attacks, which is a great freaking. Yeah, it's dead. Sam comes in and gets a little bit awkward. Ted tries to excuse himself, but she tells him to stay. Sam tells me he's decided to stay with the team. She says, how did Edwin take the news? He says, not good. Ted was looking forward to the goodbye handshake from Francis, which is good. Corrupt. (laughs) Yeah. It's really well framed the way they have, um, like, Ted's about to leave them to it. And obviously Ted knows. Sam doesn't know Ted knows, but Ted knows. Mm. Yeah. And Ted's about like, oh, I'll I'll leave you guys to discuss business. Like he he does he, he obviously knows it's it's not like it, it's it's not gonna be business business, but he also knows it's, it's that, down. It's that moment where Sam goes, oh, hang on, yeah, and he turns but they, to Ted. They, yeah, but they both kind of like like Rebecca more like almost not not fearful like as if she's afraid of Sam, just fearful of the bad news that she's about to get. Like, no, please, Ted, don't. And then Sam's also like, no, no, stay. Because he knows he's going to have this conversation with Ted anyway, so yeah. mm. might as well just but, kill yeah. two birds with one it's, stone. It's just he turns turn to Ted and he's, he's, yeah. uh, he's like, um, it's not because of my feelings for you. Um, I just feel like this is right for me in my my journey at this point. I should go. Mm. And then leaves. And then Ted goes, I think that was aimed at you. <laughs> like, <Yeah. that's- laughs> it was good. Yeah. Well, it's it's cool as well because Sam's like 
been almost like selfless to like like everything he does this series is Sam doing things to make other people happy. Yeah. And Sam Sam staying at Richmond is because Sam wants to stay at Richmond because it makes He's... him happy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's, that's, that's it's just true. fun. This is what again, just that bit where Ted, where Ted just goes, I think that was a yeah. I know. And then she just necks that bot that glass of champagne. Oh, you killed that. <laughs> like, it's, it's like speaking of Trent Cream, we run into him in the car park here. Oh. Uh he and Ted have a great little moment. He says, uh, I was worried <laughs> about you. I thought you might have been in a bike accident. He says, I don't even know how to ride a bicycle. He goes, Really? That surprises me. Why? Because the hair and the, the whole hair? vibe. The whole vibe, and Ted goes, "Yeah, actually, <laughs> it, it did. It did very much surprise me as well that Trent Crim does not know how to ride a bike." <laughs> Again, just these weird bits. Like at the end of like this massive arc, like a whole series yeah. worth of arc of things, we just get dumb jokes. Yeah, I I, yeah. I, I love this scene. I think it's fucking great. It's, it's great. Tre- Trent's yeah. awesome. Trent Trent's Trent, like redemption Trent. arc is fucking fantastic. So yeah, Trent yeah. is basically like, um, well, I no longer work for the independent after revealing um who my source was. And Ted goes, It wasn't me. And he goes, Oh no, it was me. Yeah. Like Trent has got like he's he's in Ted's tractor beam, isn't he? Mm, right. He oh, is now for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, but even before after the yeah. uh episode after the dinner. Four, was it with the with the curry, yeah. You know, like yeah. he had him then, and like, um, but he goes, Oh, so now you're Trent Crim, independent, independent. <laughs> and he and, and, and Trent goes, My dad made the same joke, and I was like, <laughs> That's it, Ted Lasso is Bad everyone's jokes. dad, like, True. It's the same jokes. <laughs> he uh, he sounds, he sounds like a cool guy. I hope our paths cross again, as do I. I love our chats, he always hits him with, I love our chats. And he offers him a ride, but he tells him no. And Trent says, good luck next season. He goes to open the car door, and he's evidently locked himself out. Was there any meaning behind that little no. bit or no? No, I think it was just a bit. Ah. Just a little bit. Um, Interesting. A little bit, a little act out, yeah. It was fun, yeah. though. I enjoyed it. You, you could tell that was Trent's car as soon as you saw it as well. Oh, it's like a shitty old, like, nasty old Jaguar or something. Yeah. It's it's a vin- like, well, not vintage. It's like a, it's like a old Mercedes, isn't it? Mm. I, I don't know like a, like a, well like a, I like a know set football. like a seventies Mercedes or something. But yeah, so it, it, oh, yeah, this I, is where we get the bits, isn't it? Yeah, Fuck it's balls. we get we get some time jumping. Five days later, Keely's packing up. Roy's got her a last day working in the same building. Present two tickets to Marbella. She says, uh, "How'd you get actual printed tickets?" We have this little bit about the travel agent, but oh, Susan, my travel agent, she's old school. Yeah. He's like, will the plane have propellers? Can I smoke on the plane? She's excited. Ted, Ted has got in everyone's yeah. head with these little act outs. It's beautiful. And uh, also, he's... Um, what's the what's the what's the stone Jaguar called? Mar- Mirabella. Mirabella, yeah. Yeah. Marbella. It's just, it's just just little fun things. I like. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, I forget what they what she called it. She had a nickname for it. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. Uh, but he. He says, we're going to a villa by the sea. Now, look, she let him get through all this. Look, can we just say for a second that things have changed with these two? Because she let him get through all this. We're going to go to a villa by the sea so you can chill out. I mean, the whole bit. It never stopped him. If you look at the up and down of their camera angles and stuff as well, it's really kind of, you see her face change when he goes for six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And you see, like her face kind of, but she's still trying to maintain this facade of a smile. Yeah. Uh, it, again, just another amazingly beautiful scene in a dumb throwaway comedy show sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. She thanks him and says she can't go. She's already started working last week. She tells him uh, he should go. He says, "Are we breaking up?" And she goes, "No, you're going to take a well-earned holiday." She tells him they'll also, be fine. Right. This, like, Roy has, A, gone and done something kind of genuinely nice for someone else. But also when he says, it's the first holiday I've had since I was 12 where I don't have to rehab my knee. 
Yeah. Like, he's what? We've established about 42 at this point. Something like that. I don't that. think he's that maybe, old. Maybe is it maybe like just about to turn 40. Whatever. Like, Something like that. Yeah. But he's he's put a lot of thought into this for 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 them both. And he's like, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna gorge myself on tapas. And he's like planned out this amazing time for them both. And he's even thought of like you can work from the balcony over the sea view because there's Wi-Fi. And she just goes, I can't do it, Roy. And then Roy goes, Are we breaking up? And you it, it's 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 really, really, really heartbreaking because you know at this point it's done, in it. The moving it in is. different the moving in different circles like yeah she goes well you should go and then they mm. just leave the, the the tickets on the table i don't think any of them went yeah no no i i imagine i can't remember from season three but yeah i mean look wait, wait season three is coming that's all i can tell you just wait um we'll get more into that as it gets here we jump to three weeks later sam has bought a place and he's going to turn it to a nigerian restaurant more on that to come <laughs> Well, it's the place that um, Edwin Akufu took him to. Yeah, yeah, because he just used it as a throwaway it's moment. A yeah, yeah. But he thought that, and he goes, "It was going to be an edge. and I was like, "Yes, go on, Sam." Really yeah. good. Yeah. Then we go two months later. Ugh. This is this is the end, children. The camera falls in behind Nate, who we we suppose by looking at this is the new head coach for West Ham. Rupert whispers something in his ear. Nick Muhammad, by the way, revealed that Rupert said to him, actually said to him, you're welcome oh. in the final scene and that the line was improvised in the moment. But it's so there that you go. Thing of, like, if you look at like Richmond training under Ted, where it's all like Lucy Goosey. And yep. doing, well, no, they're doing dance routines and yes. they're throwing out, hello, Rebecca's mom and stuff. And with this, it's very hut, 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 hut. Yeah. Yeah, it's very kind of like fascistic. And I yeah. get that it's supposed to be. Yeah. What yeah, the only... like Nate then walks away and comes to the camera and just glares. Well, he does that little like eyebrow raise as well for a yes! moment, he? Which I didn't right. notice the first time I saw it. It was only when I was watching it, like just then, I was like, oh, that's, that's odd. Yeah. You remember back to episode one of this season? That's how season one... Season two, episode one started. The camera goes from black to Nate's face right here. Mm. That's how season two started. That's how yep. we end it. The only thing this scene was missing was the Imperial March, wasn't it? Literally. <laughs> like, oh, oh. oh. Yeah. It's... Ru Ru Rupert's definitely fucking Palpatine. <laughs> oh, it's so, yeah. it, like, it is very heavy on the we are evil now. Yeah. Yeah. Just the dark side of the like yeah oh yeah I, it just made me hate i didn't think i could hate um nate anymore but I, that, that bit I, the camera and then I just the, the it's a the very street. subtle eyebrow mm. Mm. so smug i so will smug. kick my tv through <laughs> the time difference as well but see between seeing this and then season three i was like I was I was angry about this for months afterwards. Like whenever whenever we played oh, West Ham, I only got into it during like halfway through season three, so I didn't have that long to wait. I but I only I had like a, a couple of hatred, months, but yeah. I was I was seething when it happened. Like I, I, yeah. I when we when we played West Ham after, I remember we I think we beat them like three 0 or something. I put I put on Discord straight after. Fuck Nathan Shelley. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wait a minute. Don't look now. We just finished season two. Where was I? How'd that wait happen? Oh my God. Talk about time traveling. We've done it. I need a nap. I'm wiped out. This show's an emotional roller coaster in the best possible sense. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is 22 episodes, not counting previews and reviews of one of the best shows of all time, and we are not even done yet. But before we call it a day, we're going for takeaways. Joe, can you possibly sum this up at all after everything we've done here? I think, as Jay very succinctly put then, fuck Nate Shelley. 
Nathan Jay, Kelly. care to elaborate? I would normally have a huge <laughs> thing prepared for this. Um, uh, no. It's just literally at the end of this episode, like you're supposed to hate him and you're given justified reasons to hate him, mm. but also to understand why he has become what he has become. Mm. And yeah, it I it was the tearing of the sign. Yeah. That hurt me more than anything else because it is a such a throwaway bit early on he just makes that sign puts it up and it's there but then it's something that they've all looked at and used as a as as a as a totem as a as a you know um and then for nate and especially in season three as we find out nate did a shit in every room of that sign's house and then set fire to it. And then set fire it, to it. it and then the it shot on the ash. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 thank, thank you, Jay, because no one else was getting that. Uh, All right, um, I was on to. No. It, it's a really good ending to a tremendous season. But fuck that, Shelley. Yeah. Hmm. I, I think, like, the, the best villain arcs are always the ones where they have no redeeming qualities whatsoever, and by the end of this series, Nate hasn't got a single fucking one. Like, credit to Nick Muhammad, because I didn't think I could hate him as much as I did in this series. Um, mm. Like, I, I genuinely, like, as I say, no redeeming qualities. Um, to rip up the sign where it's like, it's something that's so important to them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it really it's such a powerful statement to have made and to for, uh, as you say with like I didn't know about that with Nick Mohammed where he like fell to his knees and screamed when he found out he had to do it um, that, that that just shows how important like how much of an important part of the show it is um, and I I think I, like this this like this episode that even, even like at the start where he's having like little conflict, like conflict within himself and just thinking as if he's thinking like, am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right, the right path here? And then by the end when Ted finally confronts him on it and he like, he just kind of explodes like this ball of vitriol. He's got Mm. all that locked in. Yeah. That's Mm. when he's kind of committing to writers. There's no turning back now. He's he's setting fire to the the high ground. I have the higher ground indeed. That, that, that's that's where he's like that's where he, that's where he's uh, doing doing the order 66 on Ted that last mm. scene is where Palpatine's finding him on Mustafa with all his limbs cut off um, and putting him in the Darth Vader suit but yeah it, it's I, I, I love the season I think I think this was probably the best season of Ted Lasso yes yeah. Uh, yeah, I um, and everyone plays their part masterfully uh, yeah, I've not really got much else to say about this episode. No, other than it is. Fuck, it is yeah. I think, like season fuck one Nate and Shelley. Fuck <laughs> Nate Shelley. Yeah. yeah. Season one is giving you these characters. Season two is this is their story arc, and season yeah. three is let's round it off. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, the most compelling novels, as you guys know, and I've, I repeat stuff like this all the time through this entire podcast here, but the most compelling novels gives you characters that the author wants you to love. Midway point of the book destroys them, puts them through utter hell so yep. they can come through the on the other end victorious and in better place than they were when they started the book. Hero as, circle, yes. As, yeah. as Ted says, it's the dark forest. It's the dark forest. <gasps> yep. That's it. We're done. I can't do any more. That's, That's it. once you Turn hit it, it that much. Don't yep. do it, Joe. You'll ruin it. I'm telling you, that was perfect. Right there. <laughs> right there. Right there. Right there. I, I can't. I can't do it. If I'm, I'm afraid to say anymore. Guys, look from a personal standpoint. I, I we get all weird about not weird, but we get complimentary or whatever. You guys are the best. Oh shit. Sure, sure. Um, thanks much for being patient with yours truly as our recording schedule went from pretty consistent to oh my god, what are we going to record again? Ah man, you got a new so, job. Uh, it did. You, you leg at one point, I think. Uh, yeah, it's it, 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 it. It's all good, man. But it's uh. Uh, you guys are the best. And look, we hope that you folks listening and watching have enjoyed this as much as we enjoyed doing it. Because I'm telling you, 
it, it's a lot, but it's this is not work. This is not work. This is so much oh, fun. Like it's I, so much fun. I love doing these because I get to talk about something uh, that I love very, very much that deals with things that are very um, close to my heart with people that yeah. I trust implicitly. Like it's 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 that's the that's the, the gift of Ted Lasso. I think it. I think Ted Lasso has given men like a weird thing to just talk about stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah I don't for know. sure. I don't know. Well, kids, uh, jo- Joe's not wrong. Uh, and we hope you took some great takeaways away from this episode yourself. We hope you're enjoying the podcast. Friendly reminders at the end, boinkstudios.com, B-O-I-N-K, boinkstudios.com. Expect a little bit of a break, and then you will get the season three preview, and then we go into season three. Look for season three. Thanks again for supporting the show. Visit us at boinkstudios.com. Share the podcast wherever you can. Check back for season three. Let us know how you're liking the show. And please, one more thing, believe. All right? For Jay and Joe, I'm Tom. See you next time, kids.